Welcome to the Membership Masters Podcast, brought to you by MembershipMasters.com. This is the podcast where we teach you how to get and keep more members every single month. I've helped thousands of people start, build, and grow memberships, and I interview some of the biggest membership owners anywhere online. My goal is to help you build a million-dollar membership of your own. Brick by brick, let's do it together. Come on. Uh, first, where are you at right now? You at home? Yeah. We have an office in the basement. So Most you're going to people. Disney next week? There's her desk that we're working on, hang stuff on the walls. Big time. Big time. Hey, I, call, uh, I, call, I, I, I like to call mine headquarters instead of my office because I don't want to work <laughs> in an office. <laughs> so I call it world headquarters. <laughs> this flip flop style world headquarters. It's where hey, right you get to call it whatever you want. That's the media. Dang it. But you're going to Disney next week? Uh, we're well. My daughter's uh, senior night for basketball is Friday, so we're leaving Saturday morning. Just me awesome. and her. Also, awesome, dude. Well, we're just going to talk memberships today, man. Talk about business and talk about a lot of things. And this is going to be really like, you know, I've just got some prompts, and I don't even know what rabbit holes I want to chase. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, you have built a crazy cool business, dude. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Pretty impressive. You ever just looked at yourself in the mirror and thought? <laughs> like, no. you're, 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 like, like, not like how this happened, because like you're, you know, you, we're we're both old football coaches. We know how to work, right? right? But like, you ever just look at yourself in the mirror and be like, "What is going on? <laughs> like, how did this happen? You ever think that? Yeah, kinda. What's kinda? All the time, actually. Yeah, yeah, it, you, yeah. What do your kids think? It's like, yeah. Well, and the the yeah, the crazy part about the kids is like they just don't get it. They think it just falls off trees, like it just happened. Yeah. They didn't see the hours of, or hours, shoot, years <laughs> of all the bull crap. But <laughs> there is definitely years of bull crap. You yes. know what I mean? Yeah. And it's funny, though, like, uh, it's funny how everything just kind of leads you to that moment, though. You know, like uh, when I started out, like, I was always like, people ask you, like, what, what was your, like, how'd you make it, man? Were you special? Did you have unfair advantages? And, you know, you think <laughs> yeah, about right. that. <laughs> yeah, like, no, we they didn't have any resources or nothing. But I do remember. I had an iPhone. That was my. Advantage. That's right. Yeah, it's about, <laughs> maybe I upgraded to the six right before I started. Right. You know, Got but, to uh, listen I do to a re- podcast. Yeah, I know, right? And uh, I do remember. Uh, you know what's funny? I my first job coaching football was at in a. It, it was a. It was an internship basically, and um, I coached freshman defensive backs. Didn't know what I was doing. You know, so I, I barely knew how to backpedal myself. And, uh, and then like, I was in charge of two things. I was, uh, I filmed from the end zone on game nights and, um, and I edited the, uh, the, the game. So like I would edit, I would go through the film and, uh, break down mistakes and, you know, cut the film down to 15 minutes for film right after school before practice. Yeah. But dude, like that background of learning how to edit that video. Oh, and I had to do the highlight video for the banquet. Yep. So I had to put music on it and all this stuff. And it's so funny. I look back and that experience learning how to do that. And even farther back, I was the production guy for the news show in my high school. So I had to edit the news, right? Yep. And, but those two skills, man, have really been the foundation of our business, like learning how to edit podcasts and videos and Yeah. Like and I mean, in the, in the work ethic of it too, like you learn, I mean, not just, by playing sports in general, but like through the beginning phases of coaching, like nobody's doing it for the money. So it's like, you're like, you saw everybody starts out as a peon at the bottom of the barrel. Like I did yes. the, the two hour, two and a half hour. And I was at Canton McKinley, which is one of the most prolific f- high school football programs in the United States of America, like huge. And, you know, to like, I had to do the, we, we played schools that were out of the state and whatever else. I had two hour drives on Saturday morning to go pick up film because that was before huddle. And I like, right oh, when wow. I came in, Right I when I came, days. yeah, right. Well, right when I right when I came into it was when Huddle came out. So then I had to learn all that stuff, and we were transitioning everything from we were making these fancy DVDs, and I did all that stuff too, just like you did. But we were making transferred everything from DVDs, putting everything on Huddle, just figuring it all out. And yeah, absolutely, that technology stuff definitely made this e- not easier, but you know, it, it tra- made a transition at least. Dude, when I was a GA at uh, West Virginia. I remember one of my first jobs and this is so funny because like you can't skip levels of success. Like you've got to, 
you know, we have a, we have an analogy in the community. It's like an infinity circle and and there's four phases that entrepreneurs go through and to get to the next level, you got to keep cycling through this, right? Like the first thing is you got to be a yearner. You got to yearn for something. Then you got to learn about it and then you got to grind and earn it. And then you can burn it up, right? Like you just, and you just keep going through these cycles as you keep going like to the next level. And I, and I think back about the horrific things that they, like I, I had to do as an intern and all this stuff. And like, and like, I, uh, I remember there was a, uh, like five years of tape. Like it was like every freshman and senior in the high school. And I'm talking tape VCR cartridges, like, oh, cause yeah. it was right before DV sports and huddle and all that dude. And, uh, and I remember I was there for like not even a week and, uh, there was like this giant room and the recruiting coordinator was like, um, you have to watch every one of these and label them because we've <laughs> done a terrible job organizing them. And dude, it probably took me two weeks to just get all the tapes on shelves before I even had to sit and start being like, well, this is Jim, you know, Redmond from North Dakota or whatever, you know, like, like it was a mess, man. But like, man, learning how to hustle, learning yep. how to grind, like learning how to do the, you know, pick up the mop mop the yeah. floor and know? as far as the transitions goes like it's just crazy like they and and they happen and you sometimes you don't even especially at the beginning you don't even realize they're happening like you go from just like you said trying to learn everything figure everything out to okay i figured everything out i know how to do everything i've you know built the website done all the technology stuff i learned how to code a little bit i did graphic design i did you know you do a little bit of everything now i'm not doing those things anymore i have to manage people and then you go yeah. okay well you know how do i do that yeah. And then you go, then you start to go, okay, well, I, I hit six figures, you know, whoop de, whoop. have you ever seen that, uh, the kid's graduation speech where he was like the valedictorian, uh, he got all the honors and all the awards and the first graduation speech, he, he stood up there and said, did all those 12 years of work, you know, went to bed early, did all the studying, did all the homework, made sure I got straight A's, did all the extra credit for what, for this 30 second speech. Right. And it's like, it's like, whoa, you know, put things into perspective. Well, you know, and you know, right now I'm going through a transition of, you know, going from, I guess, well, we already went from six to seven figures. And now you're trying to like, what's next? Eight figures. You're like, holy cow. Like that's mind blowing. You know, it is. It I, is. And it's a great master. question. It's a great question. Like, <laughs> like I what, had do you, a, what do you do next? Dude, I was having a Facebook discussion with some entrepreneurs, uh, some buddies of mine on Facebook, um, uh, right now, uh, just a few minutes ago. And, uh, there was a debate on, you know, he was basically like, um, I'll give a shout out to him, Greg Hickman. He changed his business name. What did you change your name to? It used to be system dot Lee. Let me see. Let me see what he changed his business to. I can't remember what he changed to. He just, he just did a Brent rebranding and I want to get this right. Cause this is all going to air. Let me see here. Let me, let me look up. Let me, let me get Greg. Greg, I'm, 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 I'm loving you, brother. I'm trying to give you some love here. You asked an interesting question and I want to make sure that it was a, uh, it was good. Oh, it's called alt agency, a L T agency, right? So he does a high end agency, like uh, really back end stuff, like outsourcing, getting people out of their business, like for high, high level entrepreneurs. Right. And he posed an interesting question. Like should, you know, there's people who will make $10,000 a month and then they'll start teaching, you know, they'll start teaching like, I mean, I, and then they help a friend and they do it. Right. And they go out and they help other people and you know, they help people get to 10,000 a month. And his point was like, Oh, you can't help people. You can only get, you just couldn't get past $10,000 a month. And I'm like, that's a valid argument. Like there's a lot of people out there that do do something once they don't really know how they did it. And they try to teach it. Right. You got to know how you did something before you can teach it. But my argument was, you know, that would be like me saying, don't use a little league football coach because they've never coached in the NFL. It doesn't make sense. Like that's not how it works. Like that guy teaches you the fundamentals. Then you go to high school and you get a guy like me or you to teach you how to actually run offenses and defenses. Then you go get somebody way better than us over at the college level to prepare you for the pros. Like you, you know what I'm saying? Like, yep. like, like where, where, and like in the, the, but the, but the interesting thing about the discussion was I said, and I said, Hey, here's another thing. It's not that that person maybe couldn't get to $20,000 a month. Maybe they didn't want to, maybe they don't want all the, that goes with it. Cause if you go to eight figures, wait till you see what your team looks like. Wait, wait till you see what your job looks like. Like your problems you know, just change. <laughs> they just change. And you may not want that other set of problems. So like, and I think that's what's missing in like the online space is like, dude, what happened to contentment? You know, 
Like, when is it enough? Maybe it is enough. Maybe, maybe you like, I like picking my kids up after school and going to Disney three times a year and not having right. the stress of other stuff. Going to cheerleading and, competitions, basketball games. That's right. Games. I mean, that's there's right. a point where you got to miss some of those things to get to those things. But sure. I had an, I had an interesting conversation. I'm, I have a friend who's a beach body super trainer, like a, like one of the big time ones with a beach body program. Right. For sure. And I work out with them every day, you know, and you know, we're pretty good friends and known each other a really long time over a decade. And we had a conversation the other day about how your friend groups have to change as have you to. progress through things. And it's kind of cool. Like, you know, it's not that you can't be friends with those people anymore, but like sometimes they just don't understand like, and you need to, be around people that just like your, your workout partner, you know what I mean? Like it's, it, you can work out by yourself, but you can only get so far. Like you yeah. need somebody to push you like a coach to, you know, he's a beach body super trainer and we push each other every day. Like, yeah. you know, that's what he does for a living. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's like, you gotta, it, finding those people to push you to the next level that know what actually have been to the next level or know what the next level is. You know, that's those transitions. And, are, and they are, may not be your permanent group. Right. They're not. They never are. They never are. Like our, our group changed dramatically when we got successful and quit our jobs. And then, hey, it's changed two or three times since then. And, you know, I want and, and like right now, it's like, what do you want? You got to surround yourself with like those right people. It's just like uh, us coaching football in the weight room. Like when you've got one kid. So I got so I used to I used to have the uh, we used to have the last school I was at before I quit my job. I had like 10 squat racks. Right. So I based, uh, I did workouts. So I based the entire workouts on those squat racks. Like I didn't want to get away from the racks. We had dumbbells and stuff, but like, I was like, you know what? We're more efficient if we can just move from power yep. clean to bench, to squat, to front squat, to whatever. I, so I only planned in the racks and we would, and we would always max about every eight weeks, right? Give kids time to grow. But what we would do is we would always group people with the, 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 the four people in a group were the four closest to their own weights. And there was two reasons for that. One, it was um, um, efficiency. Like we're not changing yeah, as many ways. Change weights, right. Yeah. And the second thing is like those four kids are literally competing at the finish line to get five more pounds on their bench or whatever. Right. Yep. But man, those groups changed every eight weeks. And like it really, you know, you saw this one kid start off in January in the group two and he ended up in group seven by June. And yep. then you'd look back and be like, well, this kid only made it to group three. And man, there's still two kids still at that number, that first station. So it's like the, the guys that, and then what happens is the fourth guy in the group is always 20 pounds less than the guy, the, the, the fourth, the, the best guy in the group. So now he's chasing that dude. Right. Yeah, and, mo and most of the time it's not a coincidence. Like it's because they're missing days, not putting the work in like, mm -hmm. and they, you, they see it like there's no, you can't make it up. Like you're getting called out by numbers. <laughs> Yeah. And it's the same thing with membership. Like people always yep. like, uh, it's the same thing. Like, uh, like people start building their membership, you know, in the community and, you know, um, even, even my higher level, like one-on-one -on -one clients, man, like, you know, sometimes they'll be like, you know, I'm just not making as much progress. And my, my number one question is always like, how many hours you put in last week? And then like someone asked me the other day, uh, they didn't, uh, it's the first month in like three months they hadn't grown. And, um, and I just said, you know, how many webinars did you do? One. Well, that's why you didn't grow. I mean, you just didn't grow. Like if, if your goal is to grow, you should have done you four. Do stuff to grow, right. You know, if your goal is to maintain, huh, well, that's cool. That's fine. I don't care if that's your goal. Like if you want to, if you, if you lose 30 members and you want to gain 31 so your company gets a little bigger and you're cool with that, that's great. That's your mission. That's your goal. But like if you want 100 more members, I hate to tell you this. You got to either roll up your sleeves or open your wallet because it don't work yep. any other way. You yeah. Know? And the, like the point, the, when you get to the point where like, I'm pretty much removed from the content and yeah, the tasks, all whatever. that stuff. Once you get to that point and you got to find, and like that book you had me listen to last night, um, who great book. Uh, yeah. Smart. Great, great book. And I kind of like in certain ways, I felt like I kind of got lucky because I didn't go through that whole process, obviously, but I got lucky and found like two rock stars. Now it took me four years to find those people of hiring and firing exactly. and Trial getting and to error. that point, which nobody knows, you know, but I have two, like I have two, a math teacher and a science teacher 
that are literally just amazing. I don't have to do like they manage the like all the graphic designers, all the other employees. They manage all of them. I don't have to do anything. Now, are they? Are they? Are, is your team full? Are those two people full time, and they're working with other contractors? They're full. Yeah. So like every all of my VAs, employee, whatever you want to call them, are all on Upwork. Every single one of them. Gotcha. So, so I they have, may have another client or two, but you're kind of one of their main people or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I would say I'm as they're full time, so I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Much yeah, yeah. Else. I gotcha. Because makes they're sense. also managing people below them. So, like, you know how you can set up the groups and the rooms on Upwork. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Like my my science teacher, for example, she's absolutely amazing. Um, she manages like two graphic designers because in, the big difference between the math and the science content was math is all like there's not a whole lot of pictures and images and graphics and things like that involved right where on the science one that's pretty much all it is like labs and like visual things for the kids like on the worksheets the notes and all that stuff it's all like like what i wanted to do with the science site was make it something that's not the biggest problem in science is that everything's outdated so like the pictures yeah. are old, the questions are not up to date like things have changed like Pluto is not a planet anymore in case, you know, you didn't know that. Like there's just some, <laughs> right. but it's crazy because some, there are schools that are still using stuff that's so outdated that like, it just doesn't make sense. So I, you know, I want to make something that's like crazy. That's like, this is what I would want if I was teaching. Like, and like things have to be updated. That's right. Yeah, so that, 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 which is actually what's a cool, it's a differentiator between you and the freaking books in class. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but I mean, it takes, my point was it kind of, it takes time, like, and everything has to be extremely detailed and there can't, like, it's got to be perfect. Like, I mean, I think we have to hire another, um, you know, worksheets, like somebody else to do it because they're, the two that we have already are not keeping up with the flow of things. So like, For we're sure. going to have to bring on somebody else. So it's like, you know, and those, those are the things that I'm dealing with now, not like, and it's different. I mean, you, you've got, I mean, you were a head coach though. So you got management experience kind of, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so that does, that does translate, you know what I'm saying? And, right. uh, but there's, there's just so many resources if you need to learn how to do something, man, read a freaking book and go with it. Like we, uh, we're hiring right now two really high level. Like I want, um, I was telling you this on Voxer the other day, like I'm, I want to now build a true leadership team, people that are hired as the leader, not Oh, I hired this person and they're really good and they became something almost. You know what I'm saying? Like that's fine. They can go. But I wanna I wanna strategically think who is in charge of retention, who is in charge of organic traffic, who is in charge of paid traffic, who is in charge of sales. Like I want I want I want like a like my own like like the uh you know, Jesus had twelve disciples. You know what I mean? So it's like like there's a reason for that. Like that's a biblical principle of leadership. Like you know, the management of the many is the same as the management of the few if you appoint the proper leaders, right? So, yep. like, I'm really thinking, like, at a high level of that. And as Joss and I were talking, I've been talking to my mastermind and some other people about training, right, for our membership and to run this thing. And, you know, the big thing was, like, it, it, we overcomplicate things. Like, you know, if I want to know um, how my retention, if I don't, why would I write my own retention Bible when I could buy a book like Never Lose a Customer Again? Let's just do that. Let's just do the thing that's cool and let's all be on the same page and then we'll iterate off right. of that. You know what I'm saying? Or it's like when I built my, uh, you know, when I first built my first webinar slides, I, uh, bought, I bought courses from a guy named Taki Moore, who's a really, really awesome guy when it comes to online webinars and, uh, and Russell Brunson. Like those two dudes are making, watch the magician's hands, you know, yep. like just do that. And you will figure out where the differences like are in your business. You just got, yeah. but you got to do it first, you know? Yeah. And, um, I think we all try to reinvent the wheel too much. We try to be unique little wallflowers and, you know, man, just give it a different spin and put your personality in it and let your people put their personality in it and it'll stand out. Right. And I mean, it, you, you, you mentioned it. Russell Brunson, Russell Brunson. The, the reason click funnels is what it is, is because, um, you know, at the same time, lead pages did the exact same thing. Yeah. He just, I mean, he sold it Next on a level. whole other level. Yeah. Like he, off, he made man. it a culture. Yeah. Like, I mean, he funnel hacking, like that was his whole pitch was, you know, why oh, oh, it's reinvent the, culture. the wheel. I was just, <laughs> I was just at funnel hacking live and, uh, and, uh, 4,500 people. Now I, I use click funnels for some things. I use Kajabi for other things, but like, mm -hmm. um, dude, I, I can sit, you know, I'm in the, I'm, in, I'm drinking the Kool-Aid man. Cause the Kool-Aid makes money. Yep. <laughs> so it's like, I like why, why I don't need, I don't need a new flavor of Kool-Aid. You know right. what I'm saying? But uh, hey, let, let's, let's talk about your membership a little bit real quick. Okay. Like I want to, cause uh, you know, I just want to, I want to learn, you know, more about what you're doing and learn from you and everything else. But like, 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 so what, what is it? I, 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 I remember a lot of messages that people have sent me, but I remember 
two spe- specific messages from you. Um, because I remember, Oh uh, boy. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. I do. I do remember two messages cause it was like back toward the beginning a little bit. So I got this message from you one time and it was like, yeah, Hey man, you know, I'm a football coach, you know, and I'm like, sweet, let's talk ball. And I'm like, you know, but not, not, no, this is about business. Okay. Okay. I thought you might've wanted my playbooks or something. I didn't know it because I was selling crap at the time, but you had been listening to the podcast and you're like, dude, I've just been listening to the flip lifestyle podcast and I launched this thing and I made money. <laughs> and I just wanted to tell you, this is crazy. Like I didn't, I haven't even bought your course yet. I just did what you said for like 12 weeks in a row on the podcast. And I'll never forget the, uh, I'll never forget reading that to Jocelyn, uh, because that was, God, that was probably five, six years ago. And like, I remember, I remember, I remember it distinctly because I was like, man, that's a, that's, that's validation that we're on the right path with the content in our podcast, because we wanted our podcast to be like, you know, there's a lot of people that can do it yourself and there's a lot of people that go get it, you know, and then there's a lot of people that need us to do it with them. And then there's a lot of people, some people might need us to do it for them, you know, like, like, but I, but it was like, all right, that, that gave me a really good arrow, uh, pointing in the right direction back in the day. So thank you for that. And, uh, and then I, and then I distinctly remember when you were like, dude, I'm making enough money where i I can do whatever I want. I can keep coaching football. I can quit. I can move. Cause dude, you were like, weren't you doing like a hour commute or something crazy when i first yeah. when you first yep. started doing this yep like hour. how long how long did it take you i was driving i was driving three hours a day hour and a half hour and a half yep jeez and like man that makes me you're one of the examples i give to people when they're like oh god i just don't have a lot of time i'm like yeah, there are no excuses anyway, no I mean, excuses yeah i got opinions i mean give your opinion yeah. man i, I don't like, know i like opinions I, you can I, make no, well, it's just me and you sitting here. Dude. Sir, <laughs> I, I have firmly believe that certain people are wired different than others. And like, yeah, for sure. I know, I'm just like, I decided I was going to do it. Like I listened to the, to the, your podcast riding on the tractor one day. I told, I've told you that it's on the pot on your podcast actually. And I, I went to YouTube and you to me and uh, other podcasts and I just figured it out. I locked myself in the basement until I figured it out. I was like, I don't, I don't <laughs> want to do this anymore. you sacrifice things, right? I don't like, want I mean, yeah. Yeah. I don't want, I didn't want to live like a teacher anymore. That's not how I wanted to live. I loved teaching. I loved educating. I loved education. Um, and another cool thing that kind of happened was from that, and I don't know if I ever even told you this, but I taught two uh, college classes through the high school that I was at. One was entrepreneurship and a, a marketing class. And I actually, we created a Shopify store and so oh, wow. yeah, but it gets even better. We show, we sold print on demand, uh, like gear from the school for the school. Like we created the school's uh, like store website or whatever. And the kids did everything. They, you would not believe how these kids bought in. You just changed like, his ha- life. Yeah. They have this the ripple baby the rest of their life. Like I'm just waiting for one of them to, you know, Hey man, me. I started a t-shirt company and I just yeah. over- took FUBU and I'm a shark. Yep. <laughs> yep. So, I mean, it, it's just led in so many different directions. Like just the, the skill set. once you have it, it's like, you can do anything you want with it. Like my, uh. my, uh, stepson is getting ready to start a um, we're, we're helping him start a uh, an agency like a facebook ads agency like we're setting up funnels for local businesses yeah and he you know he's excited this can be because he's he's seen what you can do you know yeah. what i mean it's incredible um, man. like I, it's, seeing, it's seeing what you've done has been like really interesting um because like you've went like it's funny like i was listening to a podcast the other day about uh, artificial intelligence or something and there's this thing called the game of life like you can look it up on youtube and watch what happens but basically like it's a it's a grid of squares and then like uh, it was on joe rogan's podcast he was talking to some ai guy and it was like you can start with very few rules and a dot in one square and then like a dot in another square and like there was rules like it always had to be touching another dot and if there was ever not a dot it would die and whatever and you can, do, but then all of a sudden it would turn into this billions of complexity dots moving around and, and like big things like happen from, from small things, you know what I'm saying? Yep. And like, and it's, it's cool watching, like we're, we're kind of like, I mean, we're known as membership experts. Like that's what we do. We help people, you know, first we help people get from zero to a hundred members. You get a hundred people to pay you $50 a month at 60 grand a year. You can quit your job. You can go at whichever way you want from that point. And then our goal is to help you build a million dollar membership. We want you to get to a thousand members paying $85 a month, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Whatever the math works out to where you can do that. But it's funny at that branch when people find that freedom, how everyone's business evolves totally differently 
like from that point on, like, like our business has really kind of, I mean, we've got multiple memberships, but we really spend 99% of our time on the brands of flip lifestyle and membership masters. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's mm -hmm. it. Like that's, that's what our focus is on. We're, we're on that path, but you've built like, like four, like four different websites with different members. Like, like, tell me, tell me what your current memberships like look like right now. Cause I don't even know if I know for sure. <laughs> so, so the way I, I'll start from the beginning is because it's made it make more sense that way. So I started with just geometry. And the reason I started with geometry is because that's what I was teaching. So I personally created the full curriculum for the first geometry course all by myself. I did create the website. I created everything, every ad, every, like everything had no employees, no one helping me. I did literally every single thing. And, and, and for, for those of you who don't understand what a teacher actually does and what that means, like that's basically like preparing 200 keynotes for a speaking event because you got to go teach every yeah. day for like yeah, 200 that's days yep, that's and 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 you've got to ha have handouts powerpoints maybe videos everything for the people in the audience you got to do that yep. too and then right. you got to actually physically hand them out so this is a massive and a way to deliver it to them and a way to deliver it because they're them. all over the world dude yeah because like our history <laughs> curriculum on our history site dude we figured it out one day and it's got like 16 million words wow in it. and we're like oh my god how did we create that yeah i can't imagine what mine it's a, is it's unbelievable dude. sorry so okay so you started with geometry geometry and then i moved into uh, then i create then i um i actually hired a, a teacher that i worked with in the same building to go through and um you know just start the next stuff so then we went into algebra two then i did uh algebra one then pre then pre-calculus then pre-algebra so we're moving i kind of went in a goofy order but yeah. like they were all they were all separate so they all have their own separate blogs with separate you know like lessons and so activities there's a, and whatever so basically they're different like entities themselves like the each of them yes yeah each of them like the and they were completely they were completely different funnels completely different shopping carts completely different everything to start uh why did you what now so and then when well, I, did I, I you would look back too. and would you look back and say that was a mistake to do it that way or well it wasn't really an option so i found a better way now with the science one because i went through it but at the time no because they're like i didn't have the money to hire the employees to create all the content at once so there yeah. was no really other way to do it did, but did you did one, you pay them for the content and where you own it or are they still involved in any percentages or anything like that who's that the oh, people no, that just, made the content. I, I just paid them out hourly. I got you. Perfect. Okay. So that's, yeah, I actually uh, did uh, the, when I first made content one, mis I, I, I would go back. I wouldn't say it's a mistake. I think it was very beneficial for everybody in the beginning, but, um, what I, but I made a mistake. I, I, I hired someone to create, like I did the first unit and I created the system and I was like, this is the system. This is how we teach. This is how teachers that use our stuff teach. This is the system. Everything has to be made following this system. But I made the first unit and then I hired someone to make every other era in U.S. history, right? Yeah. All right. So, but what I did was I actually made a percentage agreement on net profit. And I think that was a mistake because uh, like, like we had, we had joint ownership of the content and the con, like I own the content and like I had rights to use it whatever, the way ever I wanted. But like over time, what happened was, you know, like, Abraham Lincoln's always the 16th president. So once I made all my content, I was the one managing all the marketing and the team. And yeah, they're not doing anything anymore. They're not doing anything, which is, but they're still you know, there's percent. nothing wrong with that. I mean, yeah. it, you make the best deals you can make at the time, right? But like, I actually just bought them out last year. I just said, here, I'm going to give you a lot of money well, and good. I'm going to now have total ownership of everything. And I wish I had done what you did in the beginning and just, uh, created that hourly agreement or hired a, it's like a scientist that works at Johnson and Johnson you know they may discover the cure you know to nosebleeds or whatever I don't know why that right. came to my mind but they're not going to get like the patent for it Johnson and Johnson's right. going to get the patent for well, it. well the way the way I looked at it and this was I don't know if it was intentional or not intentional but the way I looked at it was I was a teacher too so I was like if I had an extra four hundred dollars a month mm -hmm. by doing this side job yeah like mo most teachers don't think like business owners if that makes sense yeah. so like the or do they or, the want to, doesn't make, or want to. right right most don't want to they just want the extra 500 bucks a month 600 bucks whatever you're paying them you know what i mean like yep. they're completely happy with that and you know i just didn't see i don't know i just never even considered that really yeah but, yeah, yeah 
Yeah. I, 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 I've seen it work good though. Easy. I've seen it work, you know, yeah, pers- you, you, yeah. it's motivation for sure. Oh, for sure. And if you're going to keep going, but like what, I, what I've learned about content, I think from running so many memberships is that there got to come a point where you stop making content, like, like paid content. Like you should be thinking about your product. So evergreen that like you may add things to it, but you're not going back and changing things, but maybe once every three to five years. Right. So yeah, the content part of the equation is also not, imp- not totally important. I mean, it, it's different in our teaching spaces because people do use that content every day, but like people really buy systems. They don't buy the actual, like, I mean, they can go look up on Wikipedia and teach right. the civil war or squares have four sides, but like, it's the, it's the way the lessons flow. Like you were saying earlier about, um, you know, you want it to always be updated when things change and because that's not what kids get. Like that's a value that you can't get. And like, that's a, pow- that's a powerful value in the content, but you're not changing the whole thing all the time. And I see so many people want to reinvent their content every year. And I'm like, no, like, like think about it in an evergreen way and yep. then add to it over time. And then when things get outdated, take it out, but don't, don't make it, don't get on the content hamster wheel. Basically. Yeah. Well, once I had a system, it was pretty simple. So the system was just, I went through all those different grades. I'm fifth grade in math. It's fifth grade through pre-calculus now. So it covers, you know, almost the full spectrum. I got a few more grades to go, but, um, it's like, how to explain it. So like when you have like fifth grade math, for example, like the hard part about being a teacher or even selling something in a teacher niche, like on teachers pay teachers or whatever, there's millions of worksheets. Like the worksheets are not the problem. Like that's not so. so what I wanted to do, the reason my blogs and all of the math content and the science content were so successful is because I took the things that teacher teachers struggled with the most and that's what I gave them. So what I gave away was this is how you teach this lesson. Like yeah. this is how you make it sound like a real world thing. Like, cause the first thing kids ask is when am I ever going to use this again in my oh, life? Yeah. Well, if you, you can answer that question, that's what I made my blog about. So for every lesson I put on the blog and I, I just did like, you know, I did one, I did one, uh, big lesson from each unit and I gave them the, this is the real world connection. Like, this is how you should teach it to them. When they ask this question, this is the answer you give them. This is exactly what you do from minute to minute. In, it's in almost like sales scripts. It sounds kinda, like. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it, it, It is, but like from a teacher's perspective, like that's what teachers struggle with the most is how do I relate this to the kids so that they want to learn it? Like that Mm. was the hard part. And then once you got once like they see like, okay, this is what you do. Then you, you sell, then I sold them the resources to be able to do those things on a grand scale. Yeah. So, and I just, I just kept like rinse and repeat. And I had, you know, I went all the way down to fifth grade. I'm going to go all the way down to kindergarten. And like my goal is you said, you know, sooner or later you're done creating content. Yes. My goal is just to be like, I want to like own the education market on planet earth. Like that's what, that's what I want to do. I want to give teachers the thing is that, you know, I want every teacher to be using our stuff, you know, within the next five, 10 years. That's my goal. So, and and if I achieve that goal, then, you know, all the financial stuff and all that, it's just, it is, yeah, that's great. It'll happen. Yeah. There there comes a point where you can only spend some, you you can spend as much money as you want, but you shouldn't, you know what I mean? Like, like, you know, like it's like when, when decisions like, uh, I'm, I'm trying, I was going to, Jocelyn is uh, taking a trip to Mexico and, uh, with her mastermind and I, I'm wanting to go to like, uh, San Diego for another mastermind at the same time, you know, but the decision is just, can we get childcare? It's not like, it's not even, a, it's like not <laughs> even world. a thought about money. It's like, you know, like once you get enough money to do that, it's like, yeah, man, invest in yourself, move forward. And you know, when you, and you learn really quickly um, when you get into entrepreneurship, especially with memberships, Mem- memberships are crazy because it's like, Oh, wait a minute. I want that new car. Well, that'd be 20 members. So you do a webinar yep. and you're like, yep. I'm going to go buy the car. You know run what I mean? Do- run a dollar trial, run yep. a dollar trial. And uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's like, uh, you know, when you, when you do that, it just, like, like you just get so much freedom. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. So like and how I mean, many, I, how many memberships do you have right now? Like how many, let, let's think about them isolated. Cause I always view my okay, so yeah, let different me, businesses, you know, I gotta, I gotta finish how it's set up. So all those blogs now at this point, what I did was I transitioned all those blogs to funnel into the same membership. So now all, all of my math teachers are in the same membership site going back. I wish I would have had one blog. I think just by looking at the numbers, the analytics and all the 
you know, that kind of the data on it. I wish I would have taken all of those different course blogs and made them all the same blogs and reorganized it by categories just yeah. because it would have been easier to manage. The SEO would have been better. Like there would have been benefits to that. Um, I would have had, you know, like I have a, a million views or whatever a month on one of the blogs. Well, a website that has, you know, fifth grade through pre-calculus. So 8 million views a month yeah. compared to 1 million, your, yeah. all of your rankings and all that stuff gets higher. So I've also been debating whether or not to just combine everything and take the hit at the beginning and go deal for with it. it. Yeah. yeah. And then, then the membership is actually on a different, it's a subdomain and whatever. I mean, I, you yeah, know, we, we do that. The too. technical uh, we've talked about that. Yeah. That, yeah. The, and one. the reason that we do that is because, uh, I, we actually originally, when we launched the, the flip your life, uh, course before it was a membership, right? We beta just a training. Like we did an eight week training with like 20 people just to mm -hmm. test it and see what kind of results people got and everything else. Make, make sure we could teach it. You know what I mean? And, um, what happened was when we first sold that course, uh, flip lifestyle, uh, uh, got like hacked, right? Like, oh yeah. While, I remember that. You remember, remember this? That. And like, yes, we, so like, okay, so here's what happened though. Our site got hacked and it got down and they replaced it with some terrorist jihad message it was crazy like there was a skull and crossbones wearing like a turban and like and it said we are the mahajadeen and like oh, i don't even know what the words were but like it was crazy dude i was like what is going on like someone <laughs> texts me and they're like what's wrong with your website and I'm like what do you mean like you're threatening world domination and destruction i'm like what and like, so I, I i'm at disney world with my kids man like yeah, we're I getting remember, dressed remember this. in the morning but like here's here was but here's what i learned from this horrific situation and it went deeper than this website dude like our bank accounts were getting hacked at the same time. Like long story. I've got a podcast about it. Go listen to it. But, uh, but like what happened was I learned something. Our members emailed us and said, Hey, we can't get to the product we bought. Right. So that's where we, when we, when we rebooted, <laughs> finally, we had to delete the whole thing and start over. Um, yeah. when we rebooted though, we realized we need our, anything people pay for needs to be on a completely different domain, subdomain, installation of Kajabi, ClickFunnels, WordPress, yep. whatever you use, than your actual membership. Because if, you're, if your website goes down, your membership is still up. So your paid members still have a way to talk to you. Right. And if your membership goes down, they can go over to the blog and they can, they can write. It's just membership one-on-one now. You got to do that, you know? Because right. um, it's just dangerous, man, having it on the same domain we're actually moving the flip your life community to kajabi totally this year um and but i'm still going to keep my wordpress as the blog because i just i just don't trust one platform having my public and private areas uh like in one place you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah i agree I, I, I as far as blogging goes i mean wordpress not, not nobody compares with them I no mean, nobody compares with that i think you're safer though like I, I i would be i am because i've had situations where one, one blog of my goes, blog went down right. but the others didn't so yes i mean there's advantages both ways but to me just like the the google rankings yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean well 99 percent you're I, not I would going literally, down. i'm number one on most search terms now for math topics like there would be no question there would be number one if I yeah did yeah because you'd have like ten but that's a more huge views. on taking huge huge yeah. it sometimes it's like that risk reward like too like yeah. you know like what do you break to make that happen like and like oh. like because because something will break I mean this, yeah. nothing's oh yeah I, I mean, can do that how many links are out there right oh jeez man you know like I I changed my newsletter the other day uh we 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 renamed prolific monthly membership masters and um you know, I had to go change the subdomain and guess what happened? All the pages broke. Like every, all those links that I've sent out there that say prolific monthly no longer work. Now I've got it. I can set up a redirect eventually when I get the pages back up. But right now it's just like, eh, you know, error 404. And, yep. uh, but you know what? It's like a stock market. Sometimes the check mark goes down. Yeah. Check mark like goes up. So, all right. So you've got, uh, I think it'll be you've got one membership now. I think me and you talked about that too, like getting that into one place. Cause then it's just like, get them in there and they can get, just put them where they need to go in the bucket when they get in the Yeah. And math teachers, most of them teach more than one thing. So now they can communicate with the other teachers. Like some, cool. most math teachers, like I taught like my schedule, my last year of teaching math was I had, I had all the freshmen for algebra one. I had that entrepreneur class, I had a marketing class, I had a, you know, a 
pass this yeah, test. Yeah, yeah. You're doing uh, more than one thing. Talking right. So now people. they can all communicate with each other. They're not and they can spread your form. message. That's smart too. Like True. the science teacher can now tell the math teacher about your site. Hey, I'm in a science place and they got math stuff too, you know? Yep. So that's a strong argument. I'm a big believer in selling one thing. Like if you do have a membership, like for example, there was some debate. Well, we own the domain name membership masters and there was some debate whether this podcast uh, would be its own thing like separately, but it's not, it's just going to, it's just going to be a part of flip lifestyle. Like the membership masters podcast will be out by itself. There'll be a category about membership masters. There'll be a playlist about membership masters, but it's just overall branding. Like it's in right. one place. Cause I want to sell one thing and then sell you the next thing, which is usually a renewal, <laughs> right? And then you can just make more money. So how, how many blogs are there? Uh, let's see. Well, there's five. Is there five now? Five, six. It's amazing. Seven, eight total. Yeah. So there's eight different blogs. So before but, you consolidated, you were literally basically running like seven businesses or eight businesses. Yeah, it, was like, in, it was insane. Like yeah. no joke. Like it was consumed me. Yeah. And I, you know, and with the science, when I figured out that I, I did that, so I'm putting all of the science courses on the same blog. So the way I'm doing that one is with labs, because that's what, you know, science teachers need the most is lab activities, lab assignments, labs, lab labs, and real world type things. So all of those, the biology, the chemistry, the physics, they're all on the same blog. And then the, it funnels into the members area. So there's just I'm, like basically five tops of the, of this funnel. I did that one by category. Yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 and it all got. What's the membership called? What's the actual membership called for the the math one? Well, it's the consolidated thing that everyone kind of pours into a math teacher coach membership. So it's like geometry coach, pre algebra coach, pre calculus. Is coach. the other one just science teacher coach? Basically, it's I teachly. I so that's going to be yeah. I'm actually gonna that's going to be the overall hub. It's, yeah, it's going to be at some point. It's going to be you know I teachly LLC, and it's going to contain STEM resources for like, it's going to be enormous. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's the long-term goal. Yeah. 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 So going back, if you could change anything on that, when you first started your membership, how would it have, like, what would have looked different? Like what would have been the, the difference there? Like just one blog, one hub of a membership where people could like, there was five, there was three doors and they could go through a different door to get to their content. I mean, it's hard, it's hard to say I would have, I could have, I don't even think I could have done that differently because if I wouldn't have named it geometry coach, like I, geometry coach is very specific. It's targeting geometry teachers. So this one class, one, you know, like they look at the screen and they go, Oh, this is for me. Where if Mm -hmm. I would have called it math teacher coach from the beginning to general, yeah, like, okay, but what grade levels? Because even now I get, every day I get multiple messages. Do you have fourth grade? Do you have third grade? Do you have kindergarten? Do you have free, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Do you have calculus? And I said, no, we're, we're, we'll have it by the end of the year. But, you know, it's, um, I, so I don't even know if I could have done that. I'm trying, I am doing that with the science one and it's working out fine. Like, I think there's merit to that strategy, though, just thinking about it. Like, you know, like. You're really niching down. Yeah, you're niching down. And like, but you're, but you're, it's like you're, 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 it's like Walmart, like Walmart, all the things everyone needs for everything is in that one building. Right. But like when you see a commercial for Walmart, it's like Pepsi's on sale for two ninety nine, right? Like yep. you're pulling in all the soda drinkers and then like, yep. you know, cereal and healthy stuff and whatever. Well, I got, I got a, I got an example of that. So one of my funnels that I have for my, for all of the math sites. So like if, somebody comes in it through a geometry lesson. So say they click on a blog post, they say, this is how you teach ratios and proportions or whatever the topic is. And they decide to join the algebra one geometry membership, right? Sure. Well, as soon as they buy at the $47 a month or whatever the, the price is at that point in time, it says, Hey, do you also want to add our full algebra one curriculum? Yes mm-hmm. or no for $10 extra a month. Yes. Do you want to add algebra two? Do you want to add pre-calculus? Do you add this? And I go through, it goes through the whole list one at a time. And like my, my my phone will go, it'll beep and it'll go, somebody paid, you know, new customer 47 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10. Uh, 10. uh, And then that's a monthly recurring at that price. So I've even tested like going, like offering a discount at the beginning. So like I did, I, I would let them in at $37 a month for geometry but I would ultimately always get them to the number that I wanted because like I said, most math teachers teach whatever. So in general, 
everybody is almost paying the exact same amount because whether yeah. they take it through an upsell or they just commit all at once at the beginning. Because some people will do that. Yeah, because some teachers follow you for years before they join. You know yes. what I mean? So they already know that I have. And that's true in every niche. Calculus. Yeah. That's true. Like we, we, I'd say the average person is following us six months to a year before they jump into the community. Yeah. You so the, the, where that, where that funnel is most successful is for the person who just jumps in head first right away. Like it's the person that sits down and goes, I'm just so frustrated with creating all this stuff. It's like, I'm joining right now. Like I found something that I think is going to work. I'm going to try it. And then they go, Oh, they do this too. Oh, they do yeah. this too. And they didn't even I know call, in the, uh, in the million dollar membership funnel, we call that the point of least resistance. Um, I'm actually trying to get away from trials language a little bit. It's easy on flip lifestyle, uh, especially our podcast, like to, to conceptualize free trial dollar trial. So that's why we teach it like at the, uh, because they're business or minded. Yeah, and I don't want to yeah. say lower level, but like people who are intermediate or beginning, you know, they're just starting out. They've just got their membership. Maybe they just got their first 50 members. And I'm like, yeah, now let's go to the next level. Let's start offering a trial. The two best trials are free and dollar. You can see what works best in your space. But really, um, what I've, what I've found from coaching so many people is that there is a point of least resistance in every niche that you can find that may not be a dollar trial. Like I've got uh, one person, she's got a membership that's like two ninety seven, right? And her point of least resistance is 97. It works better than free trials because yep. I think there's such a gap between the high price monthly payment. People are like, well, wait a minute. If it's 300 a month, you're not going to give it to me for free, right? Right, so like, absolutely. And, and her space has a, a higher uh, ec uh, socioeconomic status of people in it. So it's like, it's, it would be stupid to offer a free trial. Like you've got, you know, it'd be like me uh, charging $500 a month for something and be like first month free. That doesn't make sense. It just right. it, like, you got to be careful not to devalue the monthly offer with your, yep. with your trials. Now dollar trials I've found work great under a hundred dollars. Like if your membership's under a hundred bucks, throwing in a trial once a month is just going to boost your numbers. It just can't hurt, you know, right. But like the, that point of least resistance, like it's interesting. You said 30 something like it's weird. It can be like, if you're charging 49 a month, your point of least resistance could be 29. And mm -hmm. then you take that money and every first payment you put over to ads and you go get more trials at point of least resistance. And the beat goes That's on, true. man, you just create this money machine, yep. you know? And, there, and there's like at the beginning, I don't even know if, like, I don't know what your opinion is on this, but at the beginning, I don't think trials work real well because like, for example, if I would have just done it with the geometry stuff, they would have, you know. Oh, you mean like when you first launch do a trial? Yeah. No, yeah, don't yeah. do that. No, uh, it's an, it's awful because like they would come, they would go and then never yeah, come and back. The, and, where, the, and the culture, you can't create, you have to create culture in your first 50 to a hundred members. Yeah. And you can't do that with trial members. No, it's gotta be a commitment. Yeah. 40% are tire kickers. And that's, yeah. that's just it. So like you, you, want, them to, you want them to pay enough people. so they go in and actually feel like I have to use this because I paid for it. Yeah. We and usually then, look at about, tw uh, when we do a beta launch, we recommend somebody to beta launch. My thought, I never say this. I've never, I don't think I've ever said this out loud on my podcast. My thought process is usually whatever you want to charge, let your beta members come in at 25% of that. Right. So if I want to charge a hundred, eventually I'm going to open mm -hmm. my beta for 25 a month. That's going to keep the tire kickers out but it's yep. going to give people a significant discount. And you can say that I'm going to, this is going to be a hundred, but then what, what you do is you can do a $25 a month round. You used you, you, and let's say you go get 30 people. You can look at those people and say, Hey there, as long as you stay with me, you will be at that price forever. Even if I go to $200, right? Yep. But and if you think about it, I still have my first member. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for real, dude, 80% of the people who took uh, the uh, first and second flip your life course are still wandering around the community somewhere. Yeah. And twenty percent, I don't know where they went. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like maybe they outgrew the community. Like that happens too. Attrition's everybody quits eventually. That's another membership yeah. myth. A forever all, customer. I, I like that concept, and that's our goal. But everyone quits or dies. Yeah, <laughs> like and it's just, all about what you provide too. Like with the dollar trial now, it's easy for me because I have if I'm giving them access to fifth grade through pre calculus, like the dollar trial is a no brainer because the retention is just like ridiculous i sent you the one the other day at a, what was it a, it was 117 and he'd been there oh yeah i've been there three 20, years or something. 28 months ridiculous. yeah something yeah. crazy yeah yeah it's see? it's, it's called, so like hey, listen man once you serve they people, see the value yeah, yeah. if you serve Contact. people i had a uh, and i, I had, gotta be great i had this lady uh join i had someone join the uh the flip your life community once and they basically just like blew up to like 500 members like overnight and they they quit the community 
not because they didn't want to be a part of the community, not because they didn't want coaching. It was just like, Hey, um, I've got to go change the group, right? Like I got to go to the next level. Yeah. And we weren't teaching that at the time. You know right. what I'm saying? And that's what kind of sent us down the road of, well, we, we should probably have a place for them to go, like yeah. to teach them something next. And that's why we added membership masters. That's why yeah. we added my coaching program, you know, stuff like that. And you guys have done a great job of that as far as like having the next level, the next level. Cause I kind of grew along with you guys, you know, you were always oh, yeah, for sure. multiple steps ahead, but I grew with you in that, in the aspect of, okay, well I'm to this point. Like I, I don't, like I don't take this the wrong way, but I don't even log into the flip of your life community anymore. You but you're going to get, you're going to get my money every year because yeah, but yeah, right. I remember you, I, yeah, that, that, that was the other <laughs> message you sent me. I remembered you sent me a message that said, Hey, I just want you to know things are taking off, quitting jobs, all that good stuff. Yeah. I'm in the community and I will never stop paying you for everything you've done for us. <laughs> I, I, I was like, that's awesome. How can I get yeah. a thousand more of him? You know? Right. And, uh, but what's but, funny is though, like, like and giving people that next level to go in your membership is really important because you are coming to a, a really high level mastermind. Yeah, and I did the Orlando. the one on one coaching and yeah. you know, all that stuff. So it, there, yeah. you did a good job of staying ahead of the pace with the upgrades and the okay, what do I do next? What do I do next? What do I do next? But yes. you're still servicing the beginners. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, uh, we're trying to. Yeah, that, that's my goal though. Is like uh, we 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 did a really good job of getting people to a hundred members. We've done a really good job of getting people to five hundred members, and now I'm like, okay. Well, we know how to build million dollar memberships. We've helped dozens of people do this. Like, let's go build the million dollar membership funnel. Right. Um, and that's kind of the next level. But even for teachers, it's the same thing. You're doing the same thing by stair stepping them, um, you know, through the different levels. And like, I even uh, saw someone one time with like a dog membership or something, and it was like agility. So, like, they were teaching their backyard agility, but then there was a competition level. You know what I'm saying? Like, Hold to go to up. the next uh, level, and there's national level and all that good stuff. You know what I mean? Alexa's yapping in my ear. You must have set her off. Oh, I said Alexa. So, yeah. So, <laughs> dog agility and that it sounds the same know. thing. But like that, there's always there's always a next level you can take people. Always. And the, what 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 I think that people disservice is like people want to do a high level thing and you need high ticket stuff. You really do. Like that's what annual sells. They serve a they serve a valuable purpose. You give a discount to get more money up front to go fuel ads to make more members. Like there, there's a valuable thing for that but you have to have multiple recurring products. That's what I think people, that's the biggest mistake I see people make in their membership. It's not about, it's about keeping them with you forever. It's not keeping them in that same thing forever. Like that's what uh, my, uh, new, my paper newsletter was when I created that. It was, hey, the biggest thing people need when they get to 100 members, if they want to get to 1,000 members is marketing. Right. And the biggest question I always got was, can you just tell me what to do every day? Cause I send emails every day. You do everything every day. Like, and I'm like, yeah, I could do that. So I just literally wrote down 30 bulleted points of what I'm going to do every day this month. And I started selling that and it was the perfect, Hey, I'm quitting the membership. I've been here, you know, a year and I've got my membership to 50 to hundred members. And I just love everything you guys do. And I'm going to keep listening to the podcast. I'm like, well, wait a minute. Don't you want to get to a thousand members? Yeah, I do. Go here, buy this now. And now they just move over to the other monthly product. Well, and I can give an example of how to apply that to a different niche. That's not like, you know, the business type niche, like in my education stuff. Once I got so many courses, now you're talking, I can get whole high schools to purchase for yes. all their teachers. That's so your high it yeah, it goes from forty-seven dollars a month, you know, hundred whatever, ninety-seven dollars a month, one hundred forty-seven dollars a month, whatever for the that individual teacher. To your sales pitch is, um, you know, someone else this, can pay for this for you. <laughs> yeah, well, not not only that on an individual level. Like now, I'm in, I'm at the point where it's like, okay, your school district is going to pay fifty-six thousand dollars this year to buy new textbooks. Why would you do that when you can pay? $30,000 and have everything you need completely digital. And it's actually usable stuff. It's not just a book that a kid's never going to read or never going to pay attention to like, like things that you're, are going to make your life easier as a teacher. Why would you spend double the amount of money or whatever the sales pitch is? You know what I mean? But like, yeah. that's the next level for, you know, selling to an individual teacher as opposed to like, you know, a complete school district with, you know, five or six high schools in it and plus elementary schools and whatever else. So it's we like, had a, uh, we had another member. Um, her name's Teresa Perleyberg, and I think it's a uh, bear mountain felting or look up needle felting and you'll find her. But she, um, so she's built this amazing membership, like hundreds of people. And she started out teaching people how to take sheep wool. Yeah. I saw that. <laughs> yeah. And, and like, and, and they, and they use like, you know, like the old lady needles. 
and they yep. make like little statues and she built this huge community of it. So, and like her next level, like we, we tried, like, uh, uh, I, I was coaching with her and she was like, well, I'm like, well, you can add more modules. You can create it more like a box where they maybe get something physical to watch or we couldn't really like nail the next offer. Well, then she goes and she, and she, she thinks like, how can I go, how can I give them something else? Right? So she goes, there's someone in town that was basically supplying her wool, right? So they partner together and that was her next level. It was like, not only will I teach you how to do this, but like, how, like right now, do you know how to go get sheep wool? Where would you go find sheep? I don't know how to do that. You know, <laughs> like nobody knows how to find sheep wool, find a sheep and wrestle it to the ground. I don't know. And like, <laughs> but like she, but she figured out, wait a minute, it costs me X dollars. I'll charge these people X, X dollars. I'll partner with her. I'll say, I'll teach them needle felting, get them addicted. They'll want new modules every month. And then bam, their wool shows up. So they don't even have to do anything. So she created this whole business. And like, they've done, dude, this is how big her business is. It's wild how many niches are. It's crazy, man. The Philip Yard community like blows my mind, like to see what people have done. Like, dude, they went and bought an old school, a school, like with a gym and cafeteria and like classrooms and they're remodeling it. And they're in like, uh, where's she at? North Dakota. It's in the middle of nowhere. And like, she's like, yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to have our students come here, have rooms like hotel rooms in this school building. Wow. And like, they're going to have conferences there. And they like, they, and all from teaching people how to needle felt in their membership and then figuring out the next, like the, there's the next two steps. Oh, where can they go next? I'll supply the wool. Where can they go next? A live event. Like it just keeps yeah. always goes- somewhere else to take people that goes back to those decisions that you talk about. You have to make like, to me, I want to have freedom. Like my kids are getting ready to all like the youngest is in seventh grade. Like only got a few years of school left. Like we're to the point where we're like, hmm, we're going to want to start traveling and stuff. I don't want to have a physical location. I don't want to have a, yeah. a, an office that I have to go to and manage employees and things like that. That's not what I want where, you know, she's going, she wants to go route. like, yeah, Her like I, yeah. I don't want the overhead of it because I don't want to be attached to something other than my phone. Like you said, we talked about that the other day. Like you just want to have your phone and that's it. And not even use a computer anymore. That's my mission, man. Like, 2021. Right. I finally got down to my iPad only, you know, yeah. and, uh, and I want to get, I, I, my mission is to build a leadership team that can, that helps me run my membership. Right. I have my art that I want to create. Like, I really think my art is like podcasting and talking and webinars and, you know, and going out and like the, the, when I, uh, when I, when my mouth moves, we make money. Right. But also the mission moves forward. Like I get to, when I tell my story, man, people change their life and I want that to happen for people. And like, but I've got to remove myself to where my decisions come in meetings and on the phone. And then like, I show up for everything else. They tell me, they, I, I actually want to turn like my scheduling over. Like, I don't even want, Hey, what do I got today? You know, person who's in charge of that, you know? And like, I show up, I do that. And um, I still get to control it, but it's like, I, you got to change the way your business runs. You have to move from membership owner and leader of the community to leader of the community and CEO of the team that helps people yeah. win in the community. Making yeah. the big vision decisions is where you Yeah, get vision's to. everything, dude. That yeah. Bit, yeah. I, I learned this from Russell Brunson too, though, like uh, vision and your art. Like this is something he talked about uh, recently and it was like, you know, like you have to, you have to change roles and hats and you got to become the CEO and the leader, but you can also even divide that up. And if it takes you away from your art, like your passion, like what you like to, like some people, their art is being the CEO, right? It is managing the team, right? There it's you. Yeah, I know. That's what we were doing on the board the other day. I know, right? Like my, my art is, is casting vision and speaking. And another thing that, that that's part of my art is I love, it's almost like, I think it's why I loved coaching football. Cause it was like, you had to solve an immediate problem. Like, like, like third down and 10 is not, or three is not working. Even though every, everything we studied before we got here said this would work. You have to solve that problem. Now there is no other opportunity to solve it. And like, I think that's one thing I really love about coaching is I can look, I've seen so many businesses now I can see the missing link you know what yep. I'm saying? And like, that's what I want to be able to do. I want to look at high level vision stuff for not just for us, but for like other people. And like your art is dude, like you are the, you, you're literally the best person. Well, there's like two other people. I can't wait to meet them. Like there's like that are really good at what you're doing, like getting these systems in place and building these teams and, 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 and juggling 16 balls at once, you know? Mm-hmm. 
And like, that's your art, man. And like, that's where you're being drawn. I can feel you being drawn to that in your business, you know? And it's crazy. Cause that's never what I expected as far. I mean, I, I guess now looking back and I, I do because like I've been fairly successful as a coach and stuff, but like when I first started, like I loved the tech part of it. Like could, mm. probably just growing up playing video games, things like that, like with my buddies or whatever. Like to me, it was, it was like what I was doing was a video game every day. Yeah. Like that's what creating the business was. And then when I got to the point where I was past that and I was like, okay, it was almost like turning into an adult with it. If that makes sense. Like, oh, yeah. okay, now I'm outgrew this. Like now I have to actually run this. It's a con you're running a company, like I managing know, people, paying people's, you know, bills, providing for their family. Like you have people that are counting on you to make the right decisions. Ooh, you know what I mean? Preach man. <laughs> Now, time, now like the, the, this other family's Chris, kids, Christmas presents depend on the success of your business. Like that's a whole other responsibility and type of all. Dude, I, I, I go, I go a step farther. I go a step farther than that. Like, and, and like, and even, even in something like education or like a niche that we wouldn't like, you wouldn't think that like it matters, right? Like certain things, but like I, I've heard store, like, for example, you know, like, um, like take the, take Teresa and the needle felting, like, someone relies on that hour with that hobby to remove stress from their yes. day that could prevent their depression. Right. And like, you know, like, um, in our membership, like, you know, like someone uh, told me the other day, I was coaching them and they said, what, what are your goals? And, um, it was on Voxer, which is a program you can go back and forth with. And mm -hmm. she sent me back a message with her daughter who's like four. And she said, Hey, thank you for helping my mommy because we want to see my daddy more. And I'm like, man, you got to get out of bed when you lead a membership, when you lead a community, like, like that teacher is relying on you to help them yeah. find what they need tomorrow so that their day goes smooth. They can leave at three o'clock. They can go pick up their kids for practice. And like it, and you have to, if you want to become a membership master, like we're talking about, like, you have to embrace that role as leader, even if it means you have to remove yourself from leading the community. You may need to, you know, feed the, you don't feed the 5,000 yourself. You got to right. hand it down to your leaders. They got to go through the team. And then now the people still get served in your membership. Yeah. And there's no better feeling than it, like in my niche anyways, when a teacher sends you a video of them recording themselves on their phone saying like, you know, I get the, <laughs> I don't have to do my lesson planning anymore. Yes. Like I can spend time with my kids. I, I got to go to my son's football game. And Dude, uh, Jocelyn one day. time in her librarian niche got a, a message and it was a video of a girl standing on the back of a cruise ship. And she, she joined the membership in like July and uh, she realized I don't have to do this anymore. I don't have to do anything. Right. Right. Yeah. And she's like, I can just show up day one and I'm ready. And, uh, yep. and she just booked a cruise. And went on it. And like, uh, even though we, we sold that company, but like, that's still one of the testimonials, like on that <laughs> page, yeah, because it's just sure. like, you know, your membership can, that, like, that's what you're really making your membership for is like, whatever problem you solve, you want to solve that problem and, and remove five pounds of the burden of life from everybody in your membership. Cause everybody's right. life's hard, man. And like every little thing that everybody you can do for people in your membership, um, you know, that's going to have a magnifying ripple going through their family, their friends, their everything. And, um, you know, it's not just, Oh, I made some content and I'm charging 47 a month. And that's part of it. Cause you got to eat and stay yep. warm, dry and fed. Well, yeah, but, you definitely and, do it for the money, but like, sure, if, you, sure. if you, if you, if you're going to do it, you might as well change the world in the process. You know what I mean? If you can, like that's, that's right. That's right. Yeah. I have a buddy in a mastermind I'm in and he, uh, he says my favorite, uh, agreements and products and everything about, capitalism and everything else is he said my favorite situation is where everybody gets to be as selfish as possible and that's good so like you know the the person's being selfish they want their time back after school right like that's good right and like that's cool because why do they want that that you know they want their time back and you're you're like hey well i put you know 30, 20 years of my life learning this and then i created yep. it and i put my time in so i'm being selfish i want my family to be well but then man when we do it together everybody's cool man and like that that i think that's a, a big threshold you got to cross as a ceo high level membership owner is like you got to say like look i well, here's what i want and that's okay but i know what my customer wants and i'm going to do whatever is in my power through my team through my decisions to make that possible in their life too yep.
And as far as retention goes, I mean, that's your retention right there. Like, like you have to have that that's mind right. frame at all times because the first moment that you don't, that's when things go raggedy. Like, I don't know who's got the most members in your community or whatever and the price points and all that matter, obviously. But to be able to say that you're, you have 100,000 teachers across the United States using your stuff, it's just like mind blowing. Mind -blowing. Like I had, I have a whole school district in Guam that uses our math curriculum <laughs> a whole crazy? district in guam and you're like you're like i was drawing you, you know you know i was a football coach drawing x's and o's <laughs> two years ago right like yeah. you know what i mean yeah that's my hey, how many um how many active members do you usually like keep at any given time uh we're we hanging around three thousand right now ish yeah. <sighs> um crazy, man. you know what's crazy the, re is the retentions under or the the churn is under four percent for the math site like, like i have each all month or whatever yeah, we, yeah, yeah each month or whatever yeah yeah it's like uh, and most of it's crazy. retirement, to be honest with you. Yeah. What do you mean retirement? What's retirement? Teacher, teachers retiring. So like, oh, yeah, thank yeah, yeah, you. Yeah. Like, I, I can't tell you how many. Oh, that's a huge thing. You know what makes me mad is like when people uh, get, I hate it when people get reassigned a new class. And it's like, oh, I'm not teaching that this year, but they're not retired. And I'm like, dang, I had that person. They've been here three years. And some yep. stupid administrator changed their schedule. Screwed it all up. Screwed yeah. it all up. Man. Well, that's where Too having the multiple there. courses, like I, now I, I know, just right? change them out. When they, when, I need somewhere I else for them to go. I, I, I get me. those very seldomly, but because math teachers already teach multiple courses for the most part, but I do get those every once in a while. Like, oh, I got, I got moved to the middle school. I'm like, it's okay. I'll just switch your account to middle school instead of See, high school. Like, hard oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. History is hard because like they're all uh, separate. Yeah. You teach psychology yeah. and all this other yeah. nonsense and you know, civics and whatever. Yeah. But, uh, but man, three, th I mean, think about that. Like at any given time, 3000 people or so having faith in you to deliver that for them. And then, and then think about this, like those 3000 teachers, man, teach, uh, teach probably a hundred plus kids a day. And like, you know, the, the, the reach, like Jocelyn at one point had like her lesson plans before we sold that company in like 15% of us schools. And like, she was like, I mean, think about that. Like the, the elementary librarian teaches every kid in the school. So it's like five, 600 kids a week Touching pouring through kid, yeah. there, man. And like that ripple just like goes like so far, but even like, um, I got this other guy in the community. He teaches uh, people how to raise backyard chickens. And like, yeah, it's literally it's anything, literally anything. Like he teaches, <laughs> he, he is considered an expert breeder of a special kind of backyard chicken. Right. And, uh, and like, so he teaches people how to raise chickens, but like that, like I, I was talking to him, we did a meetup in San Diego when I spoke in an event and he came to it and, uh, and he was just a podcast listener and we just hung out and talked about it. And he's like, and I was like, tell me, tell me why people are into this. Cause it can't just be like, it's just a hobby. And he's like, no nah, man, like, you know, these are people with deep rooted beliefs and like building a more sustainable future and like eating food that they prepare and that they raise and like earning their keep in the, in the world. And like, and you know, then these people like this one thing, like, you know, their neighbors are like, it's, a, it's almost a status thing. It's like they want their neighbors to see them doing something to impact the world. Right. Like, Hey, look, you know what? I'm raising my own chickens. Um, I'm eating the eggs and we're eating the meat and you know, we've got this sustainable ecosystem. It's saving us money. Like, and it's just, and it's and like, they, they want that. And they're, they're, they're trying to cause a ripple in their community. Like, well, maybe you don't raise chickens, but you're like, dang, man, they're raising chickens. Maybe I'll, uh, go hunting, you know, maybe I'll right. recycle more, whatever, man. You know what I mean? Like, but it's, it's that ripple that comes out of our communities, you know, and like 3000 people, like in the grand scheme of things, I mean, there's 7 billion humans, right? Yeah. Like it doesn't take a ton of people to make a lot of money and do some serious impact out there in the universe, man. Yep. Well, I mean, you want to, you want to change course here and talk about some high level stuff with memberships. Yeah. Give it, give it, give it. I'm, I, that's why we're here. Let's like, talk about, let's talk about, cause I brought up churn. Let's talk about redu how, ways to like different techniques that you've used and that I've used to reduce churn as far as like, not okay. just the education companies, but in general, so what's, what's the, one what's thing, the best thing you've done to stop, to, to, to at least slow down churn. Cause, and I, I don't want to, I want to, let me frame this though. Um, churn <laughs> as we're talking about it is basically that we're only looking at the monthly. That's all I really look at because uh, over enough time, everything goes to zero. You have to always replenish your membership. Cause I think yeah. uh, I've framed this poorly in the past on my podcast. Like people think, you get a customer, they never quit, whatever, right? 
And that's just not true. Like you've got to, you're all sales and marketing are always a part of it on one half of the equation, but then your monthly revenue is also the back half of how many people quit last month. And can I replace one more than those? Okay. Yeah. So, all right. So give me, give me your best, best thing. And about churn. And you're always going to have, you're always going to have some churn. So like I said, the retirement thing, like I, the best emails I ever get are the teachers that say, Oh, you know, I was in my last three years of teaching and I just couldn't keep up with the technology and all the nonsense anymore. So that's when I decided to buy your thing. Thank you so much. You made my last three years just amazing. Right, right. Like, you know, those type of things like that, that, that kind of churn is going to happen. That's, I mean, the thing I'm most proud of in my business is probably how low my churn rate is. Like it's between two and a half, four percent. Yeah, that's really good on a monthly basis. Like churn usually for anybody is going to float between seven and 15% depending on the niche. Yeah. And, you know, and I, so. I'm, I did a, I also did like private coaching and whatever with Jared Robinson. You know, you know him. Yeah, and, Jared Robinson um, at uh, PE. He helped. Com. Yeah, that's what we focused. Yeah, I'm going to get Jared on this podcast because like, Jared's one of my best, oldest oldest membership buddies. So he helped. He helped me a lot with churn. Um, one of the techniques that I used was the uh, a quarterly membership because yes, in education, the one thing teachers like the whole reason the teachers sign up for the most part is to save time, right. like their time. Well, the problem is when they'll purchase something and then they'll never even open it. They'll go, Oh yeah. Well, like I have, I've had teachers that, um, has were members for multiple years and then they go, well, I just kept paying for this because I thought someday I would use it. I'd use it. I use it. And, I, and I've never even opened it. And I said, well, why don't you open it? Well, cause I don't have time. And I say, you know, I, I I'll give you the, this month for free like right. another month for free. I just want you to open it and try it, like open it and try it. You know what I mean? So like one thing that I did was I made a quarterly option for the membership and that kind of forces them to have three months to use it. Where like with the seven day trial or whatever, now those stick, like now their attention on those is great too, because there's so much content in there. Like there's right. literally nothing you could search for. In the You're just giving them more time to actually know they need it. And even if they only yeah. use it twice in that 90 days, they're like, oh, I don't know if I want to get rid of that. That's my break in case, break glass in case of emergency quarterly membership, you know? Right. And, yeah. and the quarterly memberships and annual memberships, they're always going to reduce your churn rate just because yes. like they're staying, they've already paid up front. You know what I mean? But yeah. as far as like what I wanted to talk about was how to like take your monthly members, like the people yep. that are paying you every month, every week, whatever it is, how to, reduce the ten, the the churn there because once you get to that point where you're focusing on reducing your churn like that's when your membership is actually turning into like a legitimate well if you've got a thousand people now you're looking at real numbers you if you've got I mean? a thousand people paying you 50 bucks a month right yep. and let's say they stay for i'm just going to just say two months all right so that's a hundred thousand dollars right like if you can just get it to three months that's a hundred and fifty thousand dollars Right. Yes. So like, that's where you know, the, the <laughs> big, big money comes. You know what I'm saying? So that's why yeah. I was asking. I didn't know how high level you wanted to get with it, but like, yeah, that's, I, I think the that's biggest the thing that we have, uh, the biggest thing that we do for churn in anything is adding live components to, to the membership. Now, I don't know if you do this because I don't know how yours works, but like, even like, even just like going live and talking to people in a Facebook group, like once a month. And even if you don't even let them talk, it like, it's like, it gives them somewhere to go and it gives them, it, it like reminds them that this is real. Cause I think that's the disconnect sometimes on an online membership, especially yeah. because you know, there's three parts of membership. There's always uh, the curated content, the community and the leadership leadership. So it can be done uh, autoresponder. Like you could just say, Hey, yep. here's our lesson plan of the week. But when you add one thing to the live event, you know, something like just show up, talk 30 minutes, people talk in a chat room. And you, and you, and at the end of that, you say on next month's live thing, I'm going to talk about this. You've immediately given them a reason to come back next month. You know what well, I'm saying? The cool, so the cool, the cool part of my niche is like, we have the Facebook group for the members that it runs itself. Like they talk. Oh to each yeah. Other. That, yeah. Well, that's what the community's for. So to yeah, it's like a teacher's lounge. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But like get, seriously focusing them though on something. And I, I got another person, she's doing a membership. She does a monthly workshop. And it's not interactive. It's literally like, hey, thanks for being here this month, right? Next month, I'm going to teach this concept. And she actually has internal marketing where she markets that to her members. You know, like, hey, this is coming next month. This is coming next month. To remind them 
you don't want to miss the next thing cool that I'm going to do for you. Right. So like, I, I guess it wouldn't be necessarily training or live events. I think it would be more uh, future pacing. Like that yep. would probably be one of the strongest things that we, that we do for retention. Like yep. I actually, uh, when I first started my print newsletter, um, I didn't do this. I mean, I didn't put anything in it. It was just about this month. So if it was February, you got the February newsletter. Right. So like in like January, I was like, wait a minute, the back page should tell them what's coming in February. Right. And it was yep. crazy. The retention from December to January, from January to February just went whoop. Like nobody yep. quit um, as soon as I added that in that one month because they knew what's what was the next month. There was anticipation, man. You know? Yeah. So I think that future pacing is probably like maybe one of your strongest churn and then just connection. Like, you know, like just connection, man. Like I, I think that's what we have done better than probably anybody else in our space do is we are accessible and we do try to connect whether you have no members or a million members, like we're trying to connect with you as best we can, yep. you know, because sooner or later the no members turns into the million members. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like you got to, you got to build that relationship. So yeah. what, like, what, what, like besides quarterly is what helped your churn? What, what helped your monthly churn the best? Um, the, the content, like what I, what I sat down and did was like, I, when I went through the coaching stuff with Jared and I did all the, like I turned it into a quarterly membership and, you know, that was kind of one of the years where my business like 10 X big time because just all the stuff that he, the fine details. Wait a minute. You mean you, you mean you got advanced, you got coaching and it actually helped you grow? Oh yeah. It's crazy. You, you, wait a minute, you, you invested in yourself <laughs> and it worked so many times. I couldn't even tell you. Yeah. I've spent, I've spent $150,000 on coaching. Did you know that? No, I did not. But I, 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 I can I tell have. you, I've, I've never paid for coaching where I didn't make back five, 10, 10 easy. times. Yeah. Easy. What, Cause I you're an implementer, for. man. You know, yep, cause all you need is that one idea that dude, one I'll pay a million thing. dollars to make three. Yes. Every time, every time you? Dude, there's no example. <laughs> there's no reason not to, you know? Yep. Yeah. Um, my churn thing though, the, the thing that, like that I, I had to decide like what content or like what, what would make me as a teacher want to stay forever? Like mm. what would be the thing that I could get them not addicted to, but the thing that would provide the most, so much value to them that they absolutely cannot leave. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And that's getting them in a routine. Once they get in a routine of using your system. So I systematized the day-to-day -day lessons, not necessarily just like gave them worksheets. Yeah. Like I gave them the system to use every single day. This is what you do the first five minutes of class. This is what you do. Oh, bell you know, to bell with, instruction, baby. Yes. Yeah. But actually lay it out for them. And that's, yes. that's what got them in with the, the free stuff was I, I, all of my blog posts are mostly titled how to teach something. Yeah. How to teach X. So like I show them how to teach certain things and then I give them how to teach everything. So like, how could you leave? You know what I mean? Yeah, you're, like, yeah. This That's is my, why this my, is opt -in, my day to day routine. My right? opt in is the first lesson of every unit. Like you literally get all of them. My wife, my wife just walked down. That's why I'm smiling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell her, tell her way about it. The, uh, yeah. the, the, like once you, if I can get you to teach the first lesson, I'm going to get the other 10. It's going to yes. happen, you know? Right. And, uh, but I love, I love that. Like that's kind of future pacing too, though, because one, you're like, here's the first step. And then the second step was predictable. And then the third step was predictable. They understood it. So they, they know to keep going and they do get addicted, right? Have you read the book right. hooked by, uh, in his name's near Yal or Al N I R E R A L. I think like that, but, uh, no. it's about creating addictive products, but, but products that are not three, addictive, like bad things. Yeah. Like good. It's like good addiction. You know what I'm saying? It's like to help your products do something. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, that's brilliant, dude. Just freaking step by step, man. Know the next step. Like that's what you yeah. need to do to, you know, you know, what, you know what improved my attention actually or retention better than anything last year. Uh, this just, I just thought about this. So I just did a data analysis of every point of least resistance entry into our membership. Not, and I compared it to people who came in at full price. Okay. So, you know, I've tried it. Dude, last two years, I've tried every kind of trial you can imagine. You know what I mean? Right. Um, yeah. So, like, we've tried 50% trial, dollar trial, free trial, $9 trial, $7, every tripwire, whatever. You know what I mean? Every way we can figure out to open a door into the community. Um, hey, I'm getting a little feedback on your mic, maybe. Did it move or something? Yeah, me too. Like, no, I'm, I was trying to yeah. figure out what that was, too. You can keep cutting out. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I think one of us moved. Whatever. If you're listening to this later, people get over it. There's, like, I can't listen to the gold. Like these bags of gold are too heavy because of the fuzz. <laughs> I'm going to turn this podcast off. Um, but like, uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah. 
Dude, when I did an, I did an analysis year because we've been testing trials for two years, both in our own membership and across recommendations and helping other people formulate trials. So I get to see like, not just our data, but like all this other data from all these other clients. And like, dude, the dollar trial extended people who came in at the dollar trial stayed like two months longer than people who came in at the regular price. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, what if those last thousand people that bought the full price, you know, at a hundred dollars a month, that had been like a quarter of a million more dollars if they had just maybe came in through the dollar, dollar trial. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and it actually like convinced me with data that, you know, cause I've always put my public pricing public so that I can play off of it a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I can have some promotions and do some, you know, this is our public price. Here it is. This is what we charge. If you want to come in on a daily basis, but you know, for 24 hours, you can come in and whatever, right. You know, annual discount, whatever. But like, I realized, dang man, like I'm leaving a quarter of a million dollars on the table. I must change my sales page to be a point of least resistance offer. Like the yeah. page you see must be that because that, that entry improved retention. Right. It's not always just what do we do at the end? It's what are we doing at the beginning to make sure like onboarding, like Jocelyn's been really obsessed with onboarding lately, because if you onboard people better, like in the first you know, month, there's a good yep. chance that that's going to create an extra month or two of retention later. Yep. Well, I've had my last two. Um, I've, I've tried everything too. Like I tried doing the dollar, the trial membership into individual courses, into two courses and whatever. And then finally I was like, I'm just going to do a dollar trial and to a full, a full access pass. So you get fifth grade, you get everything we got, you get access to everything, every holiday lesson activity, every, everything. And my, my, uh, people who, I don't know what this number is called, but the people that stay past the seven day trial, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it, is it 87% the last I call, time? I call, I call that recovery. Yeah. Whatever, whatever it's That's called. That's what I call it. I rec like if I sell a hundred trials in 60, I recovered 60 of them. And yeah. I mean, you can call it retention, retain, but like retention to me is like, a full month member that's paid a full month. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They just keep going, you know, I don't just know. Just fine tuning how to get that number up. So like, you know, the higher that number is, then you got like, I mean, it's literally just like, it's simple at that point because yeah. then you're I, I tell you another thing that helped us is uh, not just focusing on, uh, I did this probably about, I don't know, maybe about 2017 we started doing this, but like I realized that I didn't need to just focus on retention that um, I needed to focus on reactivation because I was neglecting going back after members who had quit. Now yep. I, I did it with new offers, but um, a buddy of mine gave me an, uh, an awesome launch email sequence. Um, uh, Brian Harris over at growth tools. Oh yeah. yeah. Yep, I got a bunch of his stuff. Yeah. Brian's one of my best buds. Great guy. Just awesome dude, dude. Just so generous. And his, you talk about a system that freaking works. He's putting a, he's putting a counter of how many like tens of millions of dollars his marketing company is making for clients. It's ridiculous. Wow. But anyway, but like he gave me this cool sequence and I was like, uh, Hey man, why don't I test this? And I'll give you a testimonial. I'm going to, I'm, but I'm going to use it to reactivate old members. Okay. I'm not going to, so it's a launch, right? It's a deal. It's a whatever. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't for new, new people, dude. I recovered, like I created like three or $4,000 in revenue in like four days a month. Wow. And I was like, man, I never thought to do that. So now I just do that quarterly. I just do everybody that's ever quit, go send them back through this thing. And every time, man, you know, you get a raise, you get a $5,000 a month raise. Well, that's a, that's another employee, you know, yeah. that you, can go make you, you 20,000 more dollars. So did you do that by the disc? Did you give them a discount or something or how'd you do the, yeah, it was like a, it was like a, like a, it was like a loyalty discount. You know what I'm saying? And I gave them like a lot of options. Like I would be like, Hey, you know, you can have 20% off the monthly for, you know, you're a former member. We want to come back. So like, you know, you to come back. So like, you know, we miss you in the member calls and, and we, which we do, you know what I mean? And like, it was like 20% right. off a monthly, 33% off a quarterly, an annual, you know, at 50% off, whatever, you know, whatever you're doing in your other promotions are fine. It doesn't matter. But I just gave them a bunch of options. And then, and then like, if they didn't respond, like part of the follow-up is, you know, figure out like, just what, like what the email three is like, Hey, why are you not rejoining? And like, you know, you told us why you quit on the way out, but why are you not rejoining? Or, and you know, you get feedback and you get objections. You never, like they're not the same as the first purchase objections, right? Like some people are like, Hey, you know, I had something happen, but I'm planning to come back in March. 
you know, tick March and go back and recover that person in March, right? Like there's different reasons that people won't come back than why they won't join. So like you just learn all, every quarter that I do this, I learn. I, I, not only do I get more members back, but that email, you know, you might get 10, 15 responses of, I love your stuff. But I, like, for example, that's how I figured out that I wanted, I, well, I wanted to do a paper newsletter for a long time, but I was going to attach it to the community. But someone literally said to me, hey, you know, I'm just such, so in the weeds with marketing, right? That I'm going beyond, you know, the, the general marketing that we have in the community is to sell your first hundred memberships, right? And like, I need, I need more. And I was like, dang, man, what if, what if, what if I didn't do a newsletter? What if I did a calendar? It was a marketing calendar and it was the membership masters, you know, monthly newsletter and calendar. And I told you what to focus on every, and that was what gave me that idea was from like that campaign. So yeah. like it just generates like, like we're that going back and reactivating people. It's the same thing as, you know, Oh, that guy quit at 10 months, but I got him back a year later and right. he stays five more months. Happens that's 15 yeah. months now. You know what I mean? So like yeah. that's, that's been huge for us. Like recovering some like, and then you get to the, like once you're to the point where you're, you're, you're looking at the fine numbers like that over and over and over again. And you're trying to like literally like, it sounds dumb, but like when you get, to the point where one tenth of a percent in some area like churn or retention or onboarding or whatever oh, yeah. when it is, is literally costing you or making you tens of thousands of dollars. Oh, like you start to pay attention to those numbers. Dude, I, more, I, I, which, I, I, when at the beginning, I, you're just flying by the seat of your pants. Have you ever heard just, of Chandler you're happy Bolt? to have a new member. You know, What's Chandler that? Bolt, you ever heard of Chandler Bolt? He's an author. Uh -huh. He does a book about authors and stuff. He, uh, yeah. I was on a trip with him one time and some guys, and, uh, and he was like, and he was doing, he was killing it. Like he was just high ticket sales funnel stuff and killing it. And he, and he was like, we were, we were just talking about ways to save money. Cause like 1% of a million is a lot. <laughs> you know what yes, I mean? Like, right, you huge. know what I'm saying? And like, he was like, he was like, yeah, man, I called and, and I spent a whole, like, I don't remember what he said, a week, a day. I don't know. Chandler, if you ever hear this, tell me. But like he, uh, he, he negotiated his fees down on his payment processors. Like, 0.5 percent each but it ended up being like thousands of dollars that they spent on ads to make hundreds of thousands of dollars like it, yeah. it made such a huge like it was like dude ten thousand dollars in ads will make you a lot more money than ten thousand dollars so if you right. can just payment processor fees knock 10 grand off that and i was like man i'm calling I'm calling my payment processors <laughs> you know like right. to try to lower those percentages because like any uh, but retention and recovery is where you're going to make the most money i mean it's just like it's insane if man in one year, if you can just get everybody to stay two more months, like it's just ridiculous how much yep. money that makes, you know? And I, I'm a math teacher. So like numbers are my thing, but I have this one ad. Uh, it was a back to school ad for my science site. I'm getting new members at $3 and 86 cents new members at That's $3. Cheap. And remember guys, he's in, cheating. In, you guys, you guys are used to all the business niches where you're paying $30 a lead. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You, gotta, you gotta have a different business, but, man. But it's like, and then that's not normal. I couldn't do that in the math niche. I don't know. I, like then there's some stuff that you're just like, you can't explain like, why, why is this happening? I've had it running for over a year and I'm yeah. getting like, it just doesn't make sense. And then, like, there's things like that where it's just like, you, know, you can you, dig you, too you deep keep playing with it. Yes, you know? absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You can get obsessed with it, man split testing and whatever. And then it's like, nah, I don't split test much rabbit holes. <laughs> I, like the only, you know, you know what the only thing I really split test is, is price points, like promotions and price yeah. points. Like I, I, I don't really split test a lot of copy. Um, as long as my copy is converting profitably, you know what I'm saying? Cause if I trade a dollar for a dollar 50 and then that person's going to pay a dollar 50 again next month, I don't, I don't have, that's what, that's another actually huge benefit of the membership model. Like, yeah. you know, if you're, if you're selling a thousand dollar course and you're paying, you know, 900 to get someone to join, like, you know, which is what a lot of these people do on these big funnels and stuff. I met a guy the other day who had like, uh, three multimillion dollar funnels and the dude had to go get a job because he was spending 1.1 1 .1 to get them, you know? Wow. Well, and I'm like, yeah. you know, man, it's like, you gotta be, you gotta be careful with that. But as long as you're making more money than you're spending, like yeah. that's, that's, and the memberships really relate to that. Cause like if you, if I spend a thousand dollars to make a thousand dollars, right? You might look at that and say, well, that's not good. But in a membership, you know, certain percentage of those people are going to pay again next month. So I didn't yeah. make a thousand dollars. I made the lifetime value of that. So I yeah, might spend, right. I might spend 2000 this month to make a thousand this month, but those people stay six months. So that's actually worked 6,000. 
Yep. I've got my math, my math sales retargeting ads or whatever to the point where I'm paying, you know, uh, $37 per lead yeah, or per, per purchase, yeah, which is, you know, I'm paying what they're paying for the first month or whatever. If they don't I, take any, dude, that's, my, anything, that's my benchmark. That's perfect. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's perfect. That's what you want. Ideal. Yeah. Cause if you retain, like, let's say you retain 75% the second month. Okay. Yeah. And, I, and then they stick huge. for 10 months, right? Like you win, you just always win. So like, that's usually my price point that I'll go after, you know, like, and it's actually a good way to set your membership price too. Like if you look down and you're like, man, dang, it's costing me $98 to get a person to join this freaking membership. Well, charge 99 a month. And yeah. then, and then what happens is like, even if they stay two months, you still win. You doubled your still money. Yeah, you know, you can throw it back in ads or whatever. Yeah, my my marketing. I actually had a one good thing we did this past school year. Um, my marketing director came to me and said, you know, why don't we have because like the blog Im images or like the the posts that we put on social media and that we you know send out the free lessons with like the images for it. Right. She said, why don't we have four images created for each and it. She was wanting to split test, but didn't say, didn't say the word split test. That's whatever. So yeah. she's like, why don't you just, why don't we make, have four images made for each blog post? That way there are different images all going to the same lesson. The teachers are still finding yes. what they want, but there's different ways to get there. So now we have five for every single blog post and we've kind of done a split test without split testing. We can see which ones get the most clicks and attraction or whatever. And we can use those to be ads to promote the yeah, yeah, content. Yeah. So it was like an organic way of split testing to see what will work for ads. So yeah. it's like, there's just all kinds of crazy things you can do. Well, I talked like, to, uh, when I was at that conference a couple weeks ago, I got to talk to a guy named Jermaine Griggs and some of you old school internet marketers uh, may know who that is. He does a gospel piano website and he spoke there and I didn't know him. I didn't know who he was, but like, that's why you go to live events. You know what I mean? To get in front. And I just happened to run into him, man. And like, dude, we had this, uh, powerful conversation like he sells a he sells like a $39 membership in the book of call and all this other stuff and like that that's one thing I, I really got from that conversation um we we've been uh very fortunate and blessed because we we have I understood SEO and organic traffic out yeah. of the gate and I also uh, for some reason I'm really good at conversion I'm just really like if I'm if I'm on the webinar and I'm on the call again when I talk we can make some money like I like I'm really good at understanding how to close the deal. So like we've had, we've been blessed with quality traffic and we can convert it. But ads is one place where we've got to, you know, step up our game. And he was like, yeah, the, the point of a membership in the beginning is only to liquidate the ads. And because if you can liquidate the ad spend on the front end on that first month's membership or even on yep. your upsells, like that's another big thing. Um, that's one of the things we're going to talk a lot about at our mastermind in Orlando is how to mm -hmm. is liquidating ad spend and covering churn in ways outside of retention, which is a whole other, whole other podcast. You know what I mean? But like right. there's other ways to, to, to kill churn, your churn cost without having to add a month. Cause sometimes you're eventually going to hit them. Uh, I can't get another month of membership out of these people. You know, I've got to add a product. I've got to do something different to cover, yep. you know, the losses like, um, what we were talking about with, with liquidating the ad spend, if you can get your point of purchase and your upsells, your immediate upsells, I'm talking thank you page upsells yep. to cover the cost of ads, then you'll, you, you can't not grow. You know, it's, 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 it's like an infinite ad budget. There's no such thing as an infinite ad budget because you've got technical costs, you've got people costs, you've got whatever, but like it literally can create a system that can trade a dollar for a dollar 50. You know what I'm saying? And you just do that yep. over and over because if you, if you spend 50, if you get 50 and you spend 50, like, like here's the example, say I've got 10 trials or whatever. Okay. So let's say I've got 10, I sell 10 trial memberships, right? Let's just say they're free for, cause I don't want to do more math than I have to. I'll let you correct me because you're the math guy. All right. So let's say I do 10 memberships and I spent a thousand bucks to get that, those 10 members, right? Now let's say that I've got an upsell on the thank you page that's worth 500. You with me? Yep. Two of those people take it. Let's say let's say I can convert 2 out of 10, which is not obscene, you know. So yep. two of that or let's say let's say let's do this. Let's yeah, let's say 2 out of 10. So 1000 people, I got $1000 for $1000, but let's say four other people 
become monthly members at $50 a month. Well, I literally just traded um, $1,000. For recurring revenue. That I liquidated. Right. Yeah. My 1000 <laughs> covered the 1000 that I spent. And then now I've got the 250 Well, what if I do that again next month? Now I'm making 500 a month. Well, let's say I lose 100 of them. Okay. The next month I do 500 Now I'm making 900 So you like, it creates yep. this stacking effect. You just have to liquidate. On a membership, you really want to be liquidating ad spend in the first couple months. I will pay two to three times a monthly member because I know my retention is like longer. Right. So once you, you know those fine detailed numbers, you can do stuff like that. But that's scary. Like for, for somebody who's just starting out, I know this is for membership masters or whatever, but like for somebody who's just starting out, like do you, you're not even going to think on that level. You know what I mean? Like you're not no. going to consider. No, it's, like it's, it's hard, man. Get the ball rolling. Yeah. Well, that's investing. And that's the it's crazy when you get to those stages though. Yeah. Stages. Yeah. When you cross from a spender to an investor as a business owner, yes. you will, bec- you will make a million dollars. Like you yes. will, because you and it understand. Happen, it happens so fast. Like going from zero to a thousand seems like ages. Yes. And then going from a thousand to a hundred thousand seems like, okay, it just happened. And then once you get to, you know, you're going from the six figure to seven figure, it's like, how did that even happen? Like I didn't even like, what the heck? I know, right? But, so then, you're like, you, but then you're like, but it did. Keep yes. going. <laughs> and watching, watching your like, watching your, you know, your, your graphs on your whatever software you use to track your numbers, like hockey stick. It's crazy, man. And X year after year after year, you're just like, whoa. Man, and we've been rocking for a while, and I could probably talk to you all day. We're almost two hours, dude. We're just killing it, man. But I, 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 want, I really want to circle back uh, before you know, we wrap anything up and talk. I really want to talk to you about um, the stages of building your team because mm-hmm. I think that that's like one of the biggest like, differences is, is like not just outsourcing tasks. I, I've, I've made a lot of mistakes in team. Like we've had people come and go and just like you, you hired four or five people. And yeah, me too. Yep. you know, I've probably, I've got, I've got probably, you know, half a million dollars in mistakes over the last eight years in yep. team. Right. So I really wanted to like have a discussion like about team. Like, so like, and I kind of want to, I do want to look at it. I mean, I'm sure anecdotes will come in. I want to look at it like, more like 2020 hindsight, right? Like I want to kind of reverse, re, uh, rewind back to where, you know, things are killing it. Jeff Twitty's rocking it. Membership's rolling, ready to grow team. You know what I'm saying? Yep. You know, and you start making some mistakes, but then you get somebody in like, like as a membership owner specifically, not just an education side yep. owner. Right. Yep. So like, what do you think going back, if you could time travel and tell Jeff Twitty, Hey, stop, do this instead. Like what's the first hire do you think that you, that you would make if you could go back and do that? The first position hire, like what would they do? Yeah. Like, like, remember, let's just, let's just say that, you know, you have, let's say your membership is, let's say your membership's at a thousand people. Let's say your membership's at two thousand, a thousand people and you're paying 85 bucks a month, uh, you know, or whatever. So you've got, you know, 50 to a hundred thousand dollars a month that you're working with. You're living off whatever, 20. And like, you got, you know, you got 30 grand to play with, you know, maybe fives yep. for ads and fives for tech, but you got 20 grand to hire an employee that's going to make three to five a month. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, well, I, I know this isn't the answer you want, but the first thing I would hire would be a coach for sure. Like everybody. That's needs always the answer I want. I'm selling yeah. coaching, but I, I know people what you're listening asking. to this podcast. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I know what you're asking, <laughs> right. but like in all reality, I wish I, I would have hired a personal one-on-one coach soon, way sooner. And Love I wasn't it. shy to pull the trigger. Like, I think I did it faster than what most people do. Yeah. Um, you know, even you guys, I did it like while I was riding my mowing the grass in the backyard. Like I was spurred of the moment. Like, yep, I'm doing this. I don't I'm care. If it's $500 or whatever. You know what I mean? Right. All in. So I've never had that issue because I've always invested in myself, probably because I'm, I'm a coach myself, a teacher, a coach. Like that's what I, that's just what I know. Yeah. Um, but as far as like doing something in the business, um, you, you probably don't want to outsource your marketing first because I think being able to market and brand and do those things is like the most important thing you can ha- have as a skill as a business owner. Especially at the beginning because you know the product better than anybody at first. Yeah. Um, in my niche, so every niche is different, but in my niche, it's definitely the content creation because it's so time consuming, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. Like what I did, what I outsourced first were the things that it wasn't even that I didn't like doing it. I mean, nobody, there's, I'm, some people do like doing it, but like it wasn't even that I didn't like doing it. It was that I couldn't do it personally fast enough 
to grow as fast as I wanted to grow. Okay. So the, the content creation was huge. And that, and that came with, you know, at that time it was just making the stuff that I wanted for the math, following my system of making the math content, you know what I mean? And then I went into, you know, you hire your, your, for, for my niche, it was graphic designer. But as far as like growth, the way to grow the fastest, is make sure, I would say, make sure you're doing not necessarily your art, but the thing like marketing and branding that's like nobody else is ever going to do that in the beginning with the passion that you're going to do it. If and that that's what, it's money tasks is what you're really talking about. Yes, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Like the things that make you the revenue to hire the next person to do the next thing for yeah. you and yeah. you know the money tasks. Yeah. And not everybody's a salesperson. So, some, you know, there are plenty of people who need to hire that salesperson first. Like depending on the niche, I would say, you know, what, if, if that's the part that you're struggling with and your content is amazing and you're just not selling it, like maybe that is what you need is somebody to spread your message better than you do. And so, it's covering, covering weaknesses, I think. Is yeah. A, yeah. It's kind of a template there. Like, you know, like you, you got to hire someone to fill in the gaps of where you suck. Cause, yeah. cause I'll tell you this right now. I can look, I'll look, you, you can look me in the eye and you can say this to me. I could look you in this, the eye and like, you know, like we all suck at stuff. Like there's things yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. none of us have yeah. any business doing. And I think that that Superman entrepreneur does it all mentality of some people is what really keeps them from getting to the next level on their team because they're like, oh, I can do it all. And yeah, you can, you can, and you should for your for first you. couple hundred members. But there's a point like, Maybe you love to podcast, but don't write your show notes. Like that's a, that's a summary of someone listening to your, like that's something yeah. to be outsourced. Right. And, yeah. and I hate to tell everybody this, but someone probably writes better than you, you yep. know, or yeah. like even customer service. That's a big one too. Like, man, like I suck at customer service. Like I'm good at, at relations. Like I, I, I'd be a better concierge than I would work in the desk at a hotel. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like concierge, I'm all about it. D working the desk, getting your room key, like figuring that out. Like I'm just, I suck at it. You know, I would never See, I, to do that. I still to this day, I don't know if I've ever told you this. I still to this day have the live chat from the math, math site come to my phone. Like I answer those questions. I do the customer service for that. Hey man. And You're part serving. of it, I, 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 cause I, I feel like if I let that piece go, I won't always know what people's concerns or frustrations are or what they need for the day. Because every once in a while you get a message like, you're doing what today? Like, yeah. you're, you're looking for what? And you're like, oh, well, we can make that in five, 15 minutes. I, I'll have it to you quickly. Yes. You know? And, it, and it, it's something that everybody wanted that you're just like, hmm, I didn't even, you know, consider Think that. Thing. It. It's so, like keeps you on the pulse of it. Or yeah, whatever. it does. It keeps you involved with the, the, because it's not always you know, bad things in customer service. A lot of it's like good things. People just saying, yeah, that's all. Awesome, I, I know. C I know CEOs of like eight, you know, ridiculous eight figure companies and they like have uh, five like random customer services uh, sent to them a day. Yeah. So it's like totally random. It's not like escalating. It's just like some of it might be a password and they'll go in for 15 minutes and answer those five questions for that exact like reason. And uh, yeah. president Obama, when he was uh, president, he started every single day with five random letters from five random Americans. And he personally wrote them back because awesome. he just, he just wanted to keep that, that, that his finger on like the pulse of the business or whatever. Yep. And uh, yeah, man, that personal connection, like you don't, you don't have to let go of things that the experts tell you to let go of you. Yeah. It's your business, man. You and it's not even that I like doing want. it because I don't like doing it. I don't like dealing with customer service, but I like, like feeling the passion. I guess I was always like a, I was a player's coach, if that makes sense. So anybody yeah. who's in the sports world, like my kids freaking love me. They con like kids I've taught tw or coached 20 years ago, still are in communication with me on a daily basis. Like it's bonds that you, you know, I feel the same way about my business, I guess. And I treat it like that. Like I want, I want these teachers to feel like, yeah, they can ask whatever questions they want and they're going to get, you know, answers, not some, foreign person on a line that doesn't speak good English. That's just reading off a script. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is their life. This is something that's bothering them. I want to make sure that I get them the best answer that, that I can get them. So that's one thing I don't outsource. And I don't know if I ever will, to be honest with you. And you know, it's cause you don't, you don't get, it's not like I get tons a day because you know, just with the niche that I'm in, but, um, 
as far as hiring though, I don't, I don't regret hiring a content person first. What I do regret is not firing faster. I think Ooh. I should, like if I would have read that book, who yeah. five years ago or oh, the yeah. first, when I first hired my first employee, I wouldn't have had a lot, a lot of the like slow down moments that I did have because I tried to, I tried too hard to teach people how to do yes. things the way I wanted to do them that weren't willing to do them or couldn't or for whatever reason. But then once you find that rock star, you're like, dang. Why That's what an A plus player looks like. Yeah. Why I need I more of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. And now I know what they look like and how to get, get them. And like, I have these three content creators that are just freaking amazing. Like make my life so easy. One, uh, for our, we have, we have a, my wife has a, a special education, um, intervention, uh, f- to help teachers website too. And one of the content creators for that, she, she's like, uh, the way we were delivering the curriculum wasn't like laid out properly in the curriculum. We were doing it by grade level instead of by skill set or by standard. Yeah. And she just went through and redid the whole thing on her own. She's like, what do you think of this? This is better. And I'm like, you're awesome. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> I would have never thought to do that. Exactly. <laughs> and it's and like, like, that's what you want. You want to hire higher. people and let them do their job. Right. Yep. And you trust to. them to do their job, delegate yeah, them to do their job. Them. Yeah. yeah. I, I think, I think the order you hire people is probably where we all get hung up on but like really hiring the right person. And like, it's not, dude, go sign, if anyone wants to hire people for their business, like go sign up on Workable. Upwork's great too. I love Upwork for contracting and stuff. But like, dude, you can put a job on Workable, pay $99 a month, and you'll have 300 applicants within a month. And yeah. you can just sit and pick out the 10 you want to interview and you're going to have a better chance of like hiring like a really, really. So I, I think the lesson is, what do you want to hire out? It's up to you. Yeah. There's no right or wrong yeah. answer. Like it's your business. Yeah. Like I would, I would not hire a content I, person for my business. Cause I, I, well, I did for history, but I didn't, I don't for flip lifestyle. You know what I mean? But I would hire other things. There so, is right. a point though, where you get to do as a business owner, where you, even if you love doing something, you have to hire it out because yes. it's like, there are things that are so time consuming that it's taking away your brain space so that you can think about the higher level things on how to advance the business. And you don't like, you can't be doing things that take hours and hours and hours that you can pay somebody $3 an hour to do. Like it doesn't matter how much you love it. You can do it every once in a while, but you can't pull your brain away for that long to not be thinking about how to advance the business to the next step. So like it's the, uh, it's the mowing the grass example. Like, um, I, uh, like when I first, the first hire out of outsourcing I ever did, and this is funny because if anyone knows my story, it's, I discovered it mine, <laughs> right, man, I learned about, I learned how to do a business on a lawnmower. Cause that's what I would yep. listen to all the time. Right. But like, I realized one day, cause I, I heard a guy named James Shramko say this and uh, he's a, he's an awesome mentor of mine. Like he, uh, just a great, he's hilarious. But like, and he said, you know, I remembered when I first started hiring people, I looked out the window, I, I had to go mow my grass and I thought I'm going to hire someone $25 an hour to mow the grass, whatever. And he's like 20 or 15 bucks, where we are, whatever it costs. And he goes, but then I'm going to sit at my desk while they mow my grass. And I'm going to try to make more money than I'm paying that person to go yep. mow my grass. And I remember when he did that. And that was the first thing I did was I looked over at Jocelyn. And I said, I got to hire someone to mow the grass. And dude, when I hired somebody, when I did, when I got that hour back every week, yep. big things happen. And like, uh, we had another guy we were talking to one time in uh, New York, we were at his apartment hanging out. We were all talking business and websites and memberships and all sorts of things. And we were like, yeah, we're thinking about like pulling Jocelyn out of the leadership role of this company. Um, and, and you know, but we didn't, we didn't know if anyone could lead it like her, you know, and yep. do this and do that. But we wanted to make it sellable. You know what I'm saying? So we had to remove, we knew we had to do it, but her picture was on everything and everything. And the dude looked and just cold as ice, man. He said, everyone, no matter what job they do in the company is replaceable, even you. And like, and I will, I will never, ever forget him saying that to me because like, sometimes you have to replace yourself. Like there's going to come a point where I may replace myself. I may have other content created. Like what if Dave Ramsey dies? Someone's got to do the podcast or that $900 million business goes away. Right. You know? So like you have to, you have to always be honest with your weaknesses and always be honest with everything you're looking at and say, how can I get myself out of this? How can I replace myself? Can someone do this better than me? 
Yeah. And if they can, then not only will I do better, but my members will do better as well. Yeah. And like, I don't, I'm, I know you, you follow, I'm pretty, you follow the profit first model, right? Oh yeah. Every so week, like Mike McCallow, 7th, 14th, 28th and 21st. I do it yeah. on the same day every month. <laughs> I, I like the, uh, I like his philosophy on taking the four week vacation and being like, see yes. if you can actually pour your, pull your, not even going on a vacation, but see if you can actually pull yourself away from the, the sabbatical, for four do a yeah. sabbatical. Yeah. Cause that's how you know when, well, that's one, th when you can do that and then you know, you have a like legitimate business that's like bigger than you, if that makes sense. Like the, you, the first time I ever noticed that my membership community was bigger than me and Jocelyn was, um, there was a, there was a point where the, the, our, you, you've been in our forums. They're stupid. Like there's just constant people yep. talking in there. And like, so like there's so many conversation I, and I finally looked and I said, and like, I noticed one day that I couldn't get to a question fast enough before the discussion. Somebody already, else answered it. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I, and I, and I, and I looked over at Jocelyn and i said, you know, we do our member calls, but I don't think we need to be in the forums all the time. Like, I think that it would actually be better and conversate, they wouldn't wait for us. So the, the energy and the, and the information would flow better. And I, I distinctly remember making the active decision not to be in the community forums, except for success. I go to success stories and in, to encourage and, and celebrate successes. And yep. Jocelyn is really good about action plans, like encouraging people to post their plans and stick with them. You know what I mean? Yep. But like I stopped going in the general forum so much except for member call days. Usually I'll do a member call for about an hour and a half. And then I'll say, if I didn't get to your question, post it in the forums and I'll spend a little time in the forums like twice a month, you know, but dude, when I, when I got out of the way, leaders emerged in my community. Like we almost have like flip your life celebrities who are like, you know, help. Like we, we literally at our last live event, put people in charge of tables from every single person was yeah. a person from the community who was active at helping other people in the community. And like some of them are growing businesses and like, you know, like when you, re when you remove yourself, like, I mean, I, sometimes you're the log jam. I mean, you got to yep. look at yourself in the mirror. And you don't honest. even realize it. Like, you don't I know even realize it. you yep. just got to get out of the way and do it. You're cause you're the freaking log jam. So yep. there's those transitions and moments where you get like, those are the big hiring moments. When, when you start to feel like for me, anyways, when I start to feel like I'm like, what am I doing? Or what do we, what do I need to do next to grow or whatever? And it was like, there's usually one of two answers. It's like either hire, get a, get another coach cause you're at the next level. You know yep. what I mean? Or you need to hire somebody else. And I can tell you like this again to a newbie would sound absolutely ridiculous, but every time I've hired somebody, I've made more money every single time. Whether once I got the right person, you know what yeah. I mean? So once you get that person that like, can replace a big chunk of something that's time consuming to you, you're going to make more money because they're going to push you too. like my content creators are to the point where they go, uh, how about this? Yeah. Great idea. I, why didn't I think that? I don't know. <laughs> cause, <laughs> like, cause I'm human it. It. and I Do can't it. think of yep. all the ideas. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Love it, man. Well, listen, dude, let's wrap it up right there, man. That was an awesome piece of freaking advice, man. And, uh, dude, thanks so much for like coming on the show today, man. And, uh, and sharing everything that you're doing. You're doing great things. Um, I, you know, I learned from you, man, and you, you, you might've learned from me, but I'm learning from Vice you now. Versa. Yeah. And, uh, that's what it's all about, dude, that we can all learn from each other and, uh, we can go out and build freaking million dollar memberships. All right, guys, that is all the time that we have for today's show. I know you had as much fun as I did on today's Membership Masters podcast. If you appreciate the work that we're doing here at Membership Masters for you and your membership-based business, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Go leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to audio content. And please make sure you give this episode a share on your favorite social media network of choice. Help us spread the word. Help us get it out there that memberships are where it's at. And if you want to build a million dollar membership of your own, I would love to help you do it every single day. All you have to do is subscribe to the Membership Masters Newsletter. The Membership Masters Newsletter is the number one membership marketing newsletter in the world. Each month I send you my exclusive top shelf print newsletter right to your mailbox. Inside, you will find step-by-step -step instructions on how to drive more traffic to your membership and daily instruction on how to get and keep 
more members every single month. Each month is written in real time and gives you everything you need to give yourself a raise every day in your membership. Membership Masters newsletter subscribers get exclusive million dollar membership funnel guides, a detailed daily marketing calendar designed exclusively for memberships, email templates and subject lines you can send to your list, as well as traffic strategies and retention tactics that keep members coming and paying month after month, year after year. I am so confident you will love the Membership Masters newsletter. I'd love to send you your first copy for free. All you have to do is go to membershipmasters.com and you can sign up for your first issue free today. Stop struggling with your membership marketing. Sign up for your first issue of the Membership Masters newsletter today for free, and I'll help you get and keep more members this month. That's all the time we have for this week. Until next time, be consistent, be prolific, be relentless. Get out there and build a million dollar membership of your own. We'll see you next time.